Block 1 Audiobook Title I died and was reincarnated as warship in a fantasy world vol 01 rewrite 001 to 100. Prologue 1 It was another fine day in my hometown. I am a student of local university and my name is Steve. You might have heard of me. No? All right. I have an average appearance. A mediocre character with mediocre everything. I am your average Joe. With one slight difference. My luck is not common. It is not because I am the unluckiest person in the world, but enough of my whining. Let's get back to the story. After today's lectures have ended I went to a cinema to watch some new films and then I met another well-known character. I met the infamous Druk Khan. When I woke up I was in a white empty room. If novels were right then I was about to meet the god. And then reincarnate as a hero with cheat abilities. I was standing and waiting. Then waiting more. Then some more. I decided to look around the room and found out that it is not that empty as I thought before. There were a clock and an armchair with a smartphone on it. The clock showed 2.20 p.m. Only 20 minutes after I was ran over, the smartphone drew my attention. It was an unknown model with Samsung markings. Considering that my old phone had Android OS as well I easily found my way with the phone. What surprised me was the phone's contents. Only one app, called Al. When I opened it I was thrown into another world. The world of gacha games. The waiting was much easier while I was playing. I don't know for how long was I playing but when I lifted my eyes off the touch screen, I saw a typical god grandpa sitting in front of me in another armchair. He didn't appear to be bored or impatient. He was just looking in his phone and I can imagine what he was looking at. When I spent everything I had obtained in game I turned off my phone and looked up at the god. He did the same. Greeting, kid. Did you enjoy the time you were left with? What do you mean? You have died, and soon you will be no more. My face turned pale. I was too shocked by his scary phrase. What did he mean with this you will be no more? Am I going to disappear? Just puff and I am gone like if I never even existed? Well, yes. What did you expect? He answered me like if that was the most obvious thing in the universe, but what about the tales of heaven and hell? What about reincarnation? Why just vanish without a trace? I was in hysterics. All my hopes were wrong. No reincarnation for me? That was my last concern. I don't want to just disappear. I want to live. Well, I have an option. Prologue 2 I was desperate enough to ask what my options were. What is this option? I might reincarnate you if you want so, with one condition. Please, tell me what you want. How about becoming a ship? Yes, reincarnation as an object. Will I be able to move on my own without a crew? You will, I assure you. A Shamaye. I am going to die either way. Now to the terms you mentioned. Yes. You will have to act according to what character I will assign you. If you are not going to do that you will be no more than ordinary and ship. Okay, I will be able to talk and move. Where is the catch? Catch is that you will have your full power only when behaving appropriately to the character chosen. Nothing more than that. Are my terms fine for you? After I considered both options, to die and disappear or to become a ship and live on. Where will you reincarnate me? You like fantasy stuff, don't you? I will reincarnate you in a such place. But don't expect too much favoritism. You will have what you have. The gods of that world will not harm you directly. Okay, I understood everything. What now? Close your eyes, kid, and let me do the rest. When I woke up I was somewhere in a forest, not in a sea. What surprised me was that I was not a ship but a girl. I hurriedly started to seek for a pond to use as a mirror. Usually in the novels, when you are reincarnated as a girl you become some beauty with big breast. Even at a first glance I was sure that the god deceived me with being a ship. He didn't do anything in exchange. There is nothing exciting about my looks. My chest is small. I have a weak bony arms with Asian skin and the same with my legs. When I found water I saw my face. Simple face with average appearance. 
I started to cry because if you reincarnated me then why change my gender and turn me from average Joe into average Jane? Status no response. No screen with stats. There was nothing. I decided to start panicking later, and now concentrate on looking through my possessions. There were. A tunic with skirt, nothing outstanding for fantasy world, a lunchbox, decorated with flower design and actually quite a pretty one, a knife, with thin long blade, could it be that this is a dagger? All in all I was greatly under-equipped for survival in the middle of nowhere. Let's search for adventures and signs of civilization. Ten hours later the night I met with a small campfire. I was twitching at every sound. I already tried using my weapon and found out that my skills did not improve out of nowhere. I couldn't protect myself if something was about to happen. Sorry, fellow adventurers, if I ever find myself in situation fight or flight then you will be on your own. I started to cry. Why the hell God reincarnated me here without anything but a lunchbox and a knife? If he wanted me to die miserably just like that, why not kill me on the spot? The sounds of the forest were approaching me. I grabbed my knife and prepared to make my last stand. Two glowing eyes appeared in bushes. A wolf found me and decided to eat me. I was overwhelmed immediately. One three hundredth of a Spartan was lying on the ground while blocking the jaws with her knife. My strength was weakening with each second. I decided to put all of my remaining strength and hope into one final strike. I blocked the wolf's jaws with my hand to free the knife and then hit the beast in its neck. Then I lost my consciousness. What greeted me was that God, you did a good job, kid, to fight against a wolf with your bare hands. Commendable achievement for a little girl. It is time? Yes. I was exhausted. I said farewell to the memories of my life, of my friends and parents and prepared myself for the inevitable. You can decide what kind of ship you will become. What? Ship fruit is a chapter, cure an army and delight somewhere in the Pacific. All units prepare to attack. Emotionless. Almost machine voice gave command to a group of destroyers. Four destroyers of Sigura Empire with one leader in front were closing in on Eagle Union convoy. Leading ship turned to port side and the others followed its maneuver. Enemy remains unaware of us. Continuing approach. They are going to notice us. One of destroyers voiced her concern. Wait until we strike. Leader cut off her panic. I can see their escort. One heavy cruiser, command, this is Kurin army. Their escort is one heavy cruiser. Permission to engage it first. Do it torpedoes in the water. Fire door. On my mark launch torpedoes at their convoy. Others always said that moments before the fight, your heart starts to beat faster, that you feel the surge of adrenaline. She could never understand them. Why would you feel excited about fighting? You just do your duty and sometimes give away your life. Launch. All destroyers launched their torpedoes at enemy transport ships. Ten seconds later Union's cruiser got hit with four 24-inch torpedoes, followed by barrage of Curan Army's gunfire. She did not feel excited about victory. Neither she was excited to find out that convoy was sunk in record time. What excited her was the time to rest. It is time. I can rest from the war, somewhere in the North Sea. The blue team should be close. Royal Navy destroyer reported to the cruiser which followed her. Wonderful, I expected as much from them. Have the other Reds taken their position? Yes, ma'am. Then we will follow the plan said the cruiser while deploying a smoke screen. She throttled up to her full speed. All guns were loaded and ready. Four ships under blue flags appeared on the horizon. They were on guard. Two battleships and two destroyers. When they were crossing an opening between two small islands they were attacked. Thunderous roar of main guns firing resounded through the area, and was followed by fast approaching cruiser. The Reds are he. Battleship was hit by two rounds. Maneuver to starboard. Delight on approach. Other battleship shouted. Torpedoes in the water. Said a charming and sweet voice followed by three direct hits below the battleship's waterline. 
two down, two more to go, thought Delight while rapidly turning her rudder. One destroyer's torpedoes slipped meters away from her port side. Damn. Destroyer was surely not happy, especially after taking full broadside of Delight's secondary guns. Greetings, good lady. Charming smile of this beautiful lady was like that of a cat, which caught a big mouse. Gr.e.ting.s. Bang all eight guns fired in unison raising pillars of water. That is. Is too scary. Lady Delight. Poor girl responded with hiccups. Your Majesty, the blue team was sunk. Said Warspite through comes. Should we return, or perhaps we could continue our walk? Yes, Lady Delight. Responded all other participants of the exercise. Ship Foot is a chapter, Fujian Princess Patricia somewhere in the Pacific. A girl with fox ears was looking into the sky. She stood motionlessly for minutes. We found Union's battleships. Destroyer reported to the girl. I know, you found them thirteen minutes ago. What took you so long? If you knew about them, why not tell anybody? There were no words of response, only the noise of dozens of aircraft engines starting up. Fuji, return to Earth. I am already here. With loud sound of aircraft taking off with catapult assist, Fox Girl went completely silent. In her world only two remained. She and her prey. Groups of torpedo and dive bombers formed up above her and more were joining with each minute. She was fascinated by transmitted images of battleships. Such strength, such firepower, such impudence. She closed her eyes, and a swarm of humming bees, colored in green and yellow hurried towards her prey. She took her precious time to examine their strength and weakness. She knows each AA gun's firing zone. She will be swift and merciless, for they bear what she lacks. Firepower. Her tails were swaying in anticipation. Her eyes, both real and flying high in the sky, were looking at those who are about to become wreckage. Why are they attacking from our blind zone? They are scared. How could we have missed their approach? They're confused. Move, move, move. They try to flee, but torpedoes are already in the water. Only then she allowed herself to smile. Somewhere in the North Sea, a large formation of destroyers and cruisers was guarding a slow-moving warship clad in gun barrels from deck to her very waterline. She was taking her stroll. Her epoch was long gone, yet she refused to retire. She knows better than that upstart of a dreadnought. A couple of years difference did not make her obsolete. Your Highness, this is a dangerous area. Maid was trying her best to warn her master. Let them come. They will see for themselves why I am the strongest. In terms of sheer mass of shells she can fire. Yes she is. Can your Highness reach the enemy before they flee in terror? She should give this shameless upstart a lesson. If she was to turn back now, that person and her corgi would keep pestering her. What are those? Are they air balloons? She leisurely asked the maid about some weird flying objects. Enemy attack. Circular formation. Instead of answering the maid shouted to the rest of escort. Princess Patricia squinted her eyes and looked around. Where did you see enemy warships? She questioned maid. Those are not balloons. Those are enemy aircraft. Have you not heard my question, maid? Where have you seen my enemy? She was getting impatient with her escorts. Flying objects approached faster than normal scouting balloons, and dived towards her. In the next moment, a loud explosion of gunpowder was heard across the sea. Announcement if all goes well, poll will be concluded tomorrow. Those teasers and support material might remain. Probably. Probably not. Ship foot is a chapter, fight with a dragon. IJN Kurin army the beast was huge. As tall as the top of battleship's mast. It must be a worthy opponent for even the most experienced adventurers. Many would run away just after seeing it from the distance. Kurin army looked at it with her expressionless eyes. She was trembling, with an unknown weird feeling. Her heart started to beat faster. She felt a surge of power running through her blood. She was exited, but the dragon didn't even try to look at her, thinking that she is just another mortal, an ant, 
It realized how wrong that was when it got hit with a barrage of 5-inch AP shells. Kuranami was running faster than she ever sailed. She was that excited. By unknown force her torpedoes did not fall on the ground after launch but hurried towards her target, as if they were floating in the air. Dragon was angered by gunfire and pain it experienced. But that was nothing in comparison with what happened 20 seconds after that. All torpedoes hit their target. Loud explosions resounded through the forest, followed by Dragon's final shout. It was over. HMS Delight The beast was huge. As tall as the top of battleship's mast. It must be a worthy opponent for even the most experienced adventurers. Many would run away just after seeing it from the distance. Its green eyes were fascinating. Her eyes have the same emerald glow. Perhaps in different circumstances she would try to make contact with it. All gun turrets were aimed at the monster. All secondary guns were ready to rain additional fire. As if feeling what was about to happen, the dragon turned its head towards delight. She was feeling regret but she must not allow the monster to kill innocent people. Bang 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 one by one all four turrets raised clouds of smoke. One by one all shells landed on their target. In its agony the beast raised a loud scream of pain. But it was not over. She tried to persuade it to turn back. It rushed towards her in blind fury. Requiem all guns were raised to their firing position. Bang 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 she tried to show mercy to her opponent but now she had to do what she must. I am sorry. Said Delight while looking at the smoking body. Pierced by heavy shells. IJN Fuji the beast was huge. As tall as the top of battleship's mast. It must be a worthy opponent for even the most experienced adventurers. Many would run away just after seeing it from the distance. But she was not many. All her planes were in the air and ready to strike. She took all the time she could to learn about the dragon's capabilities. It moved towards her. It sensed how dangerous the swarm above her was. But it was too late. From above the clouds three groups of A7M repu dived towards it to create a distraction. While it was busy, she sent D4Y Swy to start bombardment. One by one all six groups set their course. She could not risk losing her power just to kill it. She decided that inaccurate but massive bombardment from high altitude will be more efficient. Only a couple of bombs hit their target, a couple of one-ton bombs. That was within her plans. Now that the enemy was slowed down and wounded, she sent all fighters and torpedo bombers to finish it off. I just hope some materials will survive. I lost too much fuel on this one. Murmured she while thinking about what she could do with those trophies. I still hope that Delight will be the MC but oh well. Either when system poll will be concluded. Or when of the ship Fu will have more than 50% voices I will start writing actual chapters. Stay tuned. Announcement ship stats have teaser of their super skills. Each grants them cheaty powers. Ship Fu teaser chapter. Adventurers Guild. What could possibly happen inside the Adventurers Guild? IJN Kuranami The guild's hall was filled with people. Some were eating while others were standing by a board. If I remember correctly. That should be the place where they choose their quests. Right now I am more interested in finding a registry. Other adventurers looked at me with curiosity but it was apparent they didn't consider me capable of being an adventurer. My sword skills may not be the best but I still should be able to defeat them all. As I was approaching the registry a huge guy with a halberd stood in my way. Where you going kid? Here's the place for adventurers, not some brats like you. I didn't try to reason with him. He is standing in my way. I should avoid wasting time like that. Instead I hit him with my katana's grip. He was looking much more dangerous than he actually is. He fell down after a single hit. Others no longer tried to stop me. When I approached the registry, a clerk asked me what I want. I would like to register as an adventurer. You are way to you. He was silenced when I drew Katana. I sliced his shirt's collar so fast that nobody could see the blade. He dot re is your blank. 
He became much more polite after I sheathed katana. HMS Delight The guild's hall was filled with people. Some were eating while others were standing by a board. If I remember correctly, that should be the place where they choose their quests. Right now I am more interested in finding a registry. Other adventurers were pretending not to be looking at me, yet I was feeling their glances. They were curious but didn't dare to be looking directly at me. Looks like nobles can be very dangerous to them. As I was approaching the registry a huge guy with a halberd stood in my way. Can I offer to you my services as a bodyguard? This place can be very dangerous. He was trying to intimidate me. Are you trying to intimidate me? Good sir. His face grew pale. He understood what could happen to him and immediately stepped aside. When I approached the registry, a clerk bowed down to me and asked what I want. I came here to be registered as an adventurer. Could you do this? This job can be dangerous. Perhaps, right away. Perhaps my smile really became scary after he tried to refuse. IJN Fuji The guild's hall was filled with people. Some were eating while others were standing by a board. If I remember correctly, that should be the place where they choose their quests. Right now I am more interested in finding a registry. Other adventurers stared at me. It was really uncomfortable. I gripped my nage nata stronger. As I was approaching the registry a huge guy with a halberd stood in my way. Hello, pretty. Have you lost your parents? Come with uncle, I'll feed you. If IT was a hundred meters away I would have obliterated IT. Right now I am in a tight space where my aircraft cannot assist me. Neither can I fire my guns. I had to do this. What you're pointing at me? Gal? Some spear with a blade on it? Ha ha ha. IT was amused. Either due to me wielding this huge spear or due to me standing like an idiot. Hey, hey. No fighting inside the guild hall. I was saved by a clerk. What are you doing here? The clerk asked me. I am here to register. Sorry. Can you repeat that? I am here to register, said I. To make him understand my seriousness, I created two little fox fires and lit my eyes with blue. Please, follow me. He was somewhat impressed but not convinced yet. Ship foot is a chapter final. What could happen in the re-reincarnation? Disclaimer, whatever I wrote here might not actually be included into the novel. I don't hate Fuji-chan. She is my sweet little child like all of the three. IJN Kurinami After opening my eyes I started to look around. I was happy to find out that there were no wolves. Was I supposed to become excited about my re-reincarnation? Then why? I don't feel anything as if I actually was cold and emotionless. I checked myself, and finally comes my gear. The katana is sheathed but ready to cut anything that dares to approach. I tried waving it around. I felt innate knowledge of swordsmanship. I can be sure that this weapon will serve me well. To test out my new guns I aimed at a tree and fired. I felt the recoil with all my body. It was powerful. The tree was torn apart with a single shot of my if I was a human, that recoil should have launched me backwards but I was standing as if nothing happened. Torpedoes are valuable so for now I will keep them to myself. This should be enough. My tests made a lot of noise. I should retreat. I don't know why but desire to retreat from this place felt natural. Did I really become Kirin Army, at least partially? HMS Delight After opening my eyes I started to look around. I was happy to find out that there were no wolves. I breathed in the fresh forest air. I felt great. I checked myself. And finally comes my gear. The stiletto is lavishly decorated with engravings. They appear to be gold inlaid. I tried piercing a nearby tree. The stiletto pierced it like a paper. I was satisfied. What made me excited were my guns. My main guns of felt like a continuation of my own body. Large barrels were radiating power. Secondary turrets turned almost immediately when I tried aiming them. I just want one thing. Bang 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 boom 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 rate it 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 I tested all weaponry. Whatever is in front of me. Whatever it was in front of me. 
became a nice little blade. Oh my, was that too much? I felt a bit embarrassed but that was completely overlapped by my happiness. I was really happy to see how strong my guns are. However, that is really bad for me. The loud noises of gunfire will surely attract locals. I should withdraw before they arrive. It would be problematic to explain. This. I J N Fuji after opening my eyes I started to look around. I was happy to find out that there were no wolves. I am excited to be alive. That is a great feeling. I checked myself. What the F? Where are my planes? Okay. I will have to survive with my guns. What the F? Where are guns? Why the F is there only a rifle? Main gun, type 99 rifle I am about to cry, God. My only weapon is that rifle? Am I a rubber boat? Okay. I have an agenata with me. What? I am crying. I have no way to express myself otherwise. A lot of time later, I tried out my agenata. The results were discouraging. To put it in a good way, I could not even hit a tree. A stationary target. When I managed to hit it, the Najinata flew out of my hands and hit me with its pole. Right in my beautiful foxy face. In 30 minutes of my training I managed to hit a tree once, 13 times drop my Najinata, hit myself in the face, start crying out of hopelessness. Just why do you hate me so much, God? My innate skill is Najinata Mastery, level 0 which has the description your pathetic firepower should be coupled with sufficient melee powers, you cannot level up Najinata skill even after billion years, I will have to run away from here because otherwise those who find me will surely make me a slave, and I have no way to save myself, I don't hate Fuji-chan but she can really become up in the long run. She should suffer at the beginning to compensate for her future ability to bomb tire fleets into oblivion. Announcement I should start actual chapter tomorrow. V1 rewrite. CH1. Dead slow ahead the prologue is located in the prequel novel. Since it is essentially the V1 from there, have I misheard him? To choose what kind of ship I am going to be? Of course my choice will be the carrier. I will bomb everything while remaining safe. Aircraft carrier is my choice. Understood, kid. If you will find that your choice is too much for you, I might change your ship. I doubt it will be necessary. Farewell. Don't die again. Yeah, I will do my best to avoid such pleasure. I opened my eyes somewhere in a forest. Maybe even in the same forest where. Better not to think about that. I looked around and thankfully there was no thing that could remind me of a very bad accident I had not long ago. I started with checking out my new body. My hair was long and white, with metal grey tips. On top of my head were fox ears, from touching which I felt a jolt of pleasure. On me was a blue kimono with gorgeous white flowers painted on it. The kimono was translucent below the hips. The fabric was light and smooth. Maybe it is silk. My body is quite slender, with no trace of fat. No traces of muscles too. That would not be such a huge issue, if not for my flight deck being almost as smooth as a board. Well, at least it should count as a... A bit higher than my small bottom was a fluffy tail. Even two of them. Both tails were with the same white fur and metal grey tips. After I checked out myself, I looked for other items. By my side were lying an umbrella, and a lunch box. It was the same lunch box, I had before. There was a sticker on it. Meals refresh every six hours. They should be enough for you not to die of starvation. Don't expect too much. Thank you. I picked up the umbrella, and was greatly disappointed. It was a Japanese-styled paper umbrella, that would be able to only protect me from raining sunlight. Since I was done with checking out the most evident stuff, I continued with my gear. I am a ship after all. How can I summon it? Uh, transform. Ship mode. Fighting mode. A lot of attempts later. Appear on me, for God's sake. Finally, I saw something appear. It was a small board in form of a carrier deck. An angled flight deck with three elevators for aircraft, and rails for four catapults. There were some antennas and the bridge superstructure. The problem is, 
it is completely flat, like, there is nothing below the deck itself, it is a simple board with some ribbons on it, since there is nothing in here, I might as well try searching for something else, in that game, to see the statistics you needed to choose the ship's details, details, a bunch of transparent screens appeared in front of me, and what was on them greatly surprised me, what the F, aircraft groups fighters, 08 installed, torpedo bombers, 016 installed, dive bombers, 06 installed, okay, okay, it could have been worse, I just need to have something to launch from the deck, my deck is, here, flight deck ready steam catapults 1, uninstalled 2, uninstalled 3, uninstalled 4, uninstalled the resting wires uninstalled, ok, I will have to use the guns for now, it's fine, everything is fine, what the f, why the f is there only a rifle, weapon systems main gun type 99 rifle secondary guns 0 installed, 4 max, anti-aircraft guns 0 installed, 8 max, it's alright, it's going to be fine, yeah, for sure, among the panels I found a way to summon a melee weapon, a Nejinata. I tried to swing it a couple of times, the results were discouraging, to put it in a good way, I couldn't even hit a tree, a stationary target, after a dozen attempts I finally hit the tree but the Nejinata was kicked out of my hands, and the pole hit my little cute foxy face, you are, I could only cry from my disappointment and misery, when I stopped crying, I continued draining, 30 minutes later I managed to make myself cry out of misery again, I hit the tree only once, while the Najinata either flew out of my hands, or hit me, or I simply tripped on its pole, just why do you hate me so much? God, after I finally disappointed in my weapons, I continued looking through the details, until I found a new reason to cry. IJN Fuji, CV, level 07, FP, firepower, 0 100 FP shows how much damage your main and secondary guns can do. AA dash anti aircraft, 0 100 AA shows how much damage your AA guns can do. Avenue, aviation, 0100 Avenue shows how much damage your aircraft can do. Road. Reload. 0100 Road shows how fast your guns and aircraft reload after attack. AC dash accuracy. 0100 AC shows hit chance. HP. Health points. 45,000 HP shows how much damage you can survive. F. Evasion. 31. Rapid deployment. LVL1. Tenacity and Bravery, LVL-1, Brave New World LVL-1, starts battle with 5% aircraft in air, every 30s shows your pathetic firepower, 5% bonus to FP and AA, on activation, launches special airstrike of A1N and B1M, can be activated every 1 hour, Nejinata Mastery, Level 0. Your pathetic firepower should be coupled with sufficient melee powers. You cannot level up an Ajanata skill even after billion years. While I was crying and cursing for my helplessness, I remembered that Gacha games love the donations. So I quickly searched for a shop. Level point, 1 platinum coin. Upgrade point, 10 gold coins. Skill upgrade point, 1 gold coin. Weapon upgrade point, 1 silver coin. Oh my. Pay to win is everywhere. All in all, I am nothing. I have no aircraft, no guns, no way to protect myself. I just hope that my HP pool and armor actually do exist. Ugh, just let the world burn. When I cursed again, small sparks flew out of my hands. I tried doing it again and again, when I managed to make some small fires. Wow. I am truly a superior being. With those fires I maybe can protect myself from a mouse. Looks like I will struggle to survive, until I actually manage to do something about my stats. In fantasy novels there is one little cliché, when the hero encounters friends, beautiful girl, fellow adventurers being attacked by evil bad monsters, and of course rushes to save them. Let's see if this will happen to me.
and how fast will I run away before anybody can spot me. I can't even protect myself, not to mention anybody else. Since I have no intention of living in a forest, like a fox, I started heading somewhere to the east, one way or another. Searching for civilization starts from searching for anything. I walked for several hours, and the sun started to set. I was yet to exit the forest, and the looming shadow of wolves killing me again was nigh. When I almost imagined sleeping under a bush, I found the path. Lucky me. I noticed that it appeared to be used. Maybe the last person to walk here did that few hours ago. There are broken branches and pinned down grass. With this high hope for the bright future, I hurried in the direction I believed the person went. Maybe I can find somebody to lead me to the civilization. Let the adventures of a fox girl begin. V1 rewrite, CH2. Lucky me several hours of traveling later, I was still in the forest. I walked down the path for as long as I could but I still did not find anybody. By the time the night fell, I managed only to find a campsite. The coals were still hot, so the campsite was abandoned at most a couple of hours ago. The fire was extinguished. I am sure that there were only two people, and by the size of the camp I could tell that the travelers did not have too much on them. It would be better to rest here. Everything is prepared, and I only need to ignite the wood. It was a small clear space so I would have at least an opportunity to notice a potential attack. I used the fox fires to dry and ignite the wood. The small light of the campfire was strong enough to cover the entire opening. Even though I was walking all the time, and it is already night, I was still fresh and didn't feel sleepy at all. It is for the best. I can sleep during the day, and stay on guard tonight, while I am in the forest. Some time later my fox ears picked up a rustle, which soon turned into a sound of steps. What could it be? It surely doesn't sound like an animal. I better prepare. If they are friendly, I can stand down. If not, I prepared the tiny rifle on my rigging, and the nejnata. If I can't hit anything, then I will chop it. The source of the steps didn't keep me waiting for long. A couple of goblins walked out of the bushes and charged at me. They are just a couple of pieces of meat in rugs, but their clubs may be a problem. Bang the tiny rifle fired but it was so pathetic, that I would have mistaken it for a cracker. The shot missed, and I had to use the nejnata. I tried to thrust the blade but the goblins evaded, and seeing how pitiful I am with my skills, they considered me dead already. Pum pum their clubs hit me. However, the hits resulted in nothing. I guess I am at least a ship in regard that I am made of metal. It was my turn to grin at the pathetic enemies. They can't do anything to me, while I can cripple them with just a hit. I, winged by my sudden advantage, charged at them. Instead of an easy kill I found myself trying to at least hit them. After a couple of misses, I managed to hit one of the goblins with a sweep of the blade. It was a flesh wound but the goblins immediately tried to run away. Oh no. You are not getting away. I don't want to fight an entire goblin settlement. The three of us went into the darkness. Little do those idiots know, foxes are nocturnal. Since they were running in a straight line, I successfully attacked one of them. Gah. A small ball of fox fire hit the second running goblin, making it fall. Its comrade turned around when it heard the shriek, and after seeing me approach, it was paralyzed in terror. I must not let them get away from me. I always can find the way back but they must not. Swoosh I cut off the burnt goblin's leg, and it had to slowly crawl towards its paralyzed friend. Ark. I pierced the lying creature's back with the nejnata. Its burns are so wonderful. Maybe the fire resistance is low? It doesn't matter Tilda. Just die Tilda. I pushed the blade all the way in, up to the pole. After seeing blood and terror, I suddenly felt a desire to play with the terrified prey. I slowly pulled the Najnata out of the corpse, and slowly approached the remaining goblin. As the bloodied blade approached it, the goblin stopped standing motionless. When it saw how I come closer with apparent desire to murder, it peed itself, and was about to start running. But I didn't wait. Pierre Square. 
Even though its chest was pierced, the goblin was still alive. I let it slip off the blade, and started researching it. Chop cut, so, a gaping wound in the chest and cut off legs are not a problem for you Tilda. The goblin's screams echoed across the forest, but soon my sadistic madness subsided, and I ended its misery. Cut I cut it in half, and watched how its insides fell out of the body. Ding you received four copper coins you received starter pack for carriers open it. Ding you received one group of A1N fighters I immediately summoned the gear, and deployed a fighter. It was just a small biplane with two machine guns and 60 kilograms of payload. I was not too excited about it, especially after I remembered my stats. Still, I was happy enough. I finally had aircraft, making me a proper carrier. I lined up the flight of four small biplanes. Their little engines started coughing, and the wooden propellers started spinning. They are small and light so I hoped that the flight deck will be enough by itself to operate them. Take off. After hearing my command, one of them started accelerating, and the rest followed it one by one. Brrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrr
I hesitated to help. I only will get myself killed. But I can spend this time with a benefit. Watching them fight may give me some insights. I watched how a horde of beasts surrounded. And killed the humans. The people never stood a chance. But fought until the end. The horde ran ahead. Leaving the path open for me. Clapping. Well, that was quite a show. A pity I didn't see some combat magic. And oh spells. While I was passing by the dead ones, at the back of my mind I considered looting, but I quickly discarded that idea. It is way too disrespectful. I was not exactly feeling guilty. I did nothing to save them, but I couldn't even if I was there. I was just a bit late to arrive, nothing else. It was already another night, and my path was lit only by the moonlight. It was somewhat highlighted by the Recon sorties I did and they never found anything noteworthy. I almost completely relaxed, until I got a premonition. I immediately jumped into a ditch, and held my breath. Ra -ra. Something rushed down the road, and disappeared in the darkness. Lucky me, whatever it was, it didn't notice me. An hour later I saw something on the road. I cautiously approached, and saw that everywhere on the ground around me is dried blood. What I noticed on the road was one of the beasts, sleeping. It appeared to be similar to a large dog, but with small spikes on its back. Its appearance reminded me of Demo. Raw. Oh, great, I'm noticed. Luck, where were you? Whatever could cause noise will draw attention here, literally blocking all of my arsenal from being used. While the beast was somewhat sleepy, I charged at it with the Nagenata. It dodged to a side and almost bit my hand. I decided to fall back, and hope that it will lose me in the chase. I ran far away from the spot I encountered the beast but it never stopped chasing me. It was toying with me, but at some point it grew bored of me being its plaything. F. It bit my arm, and knocked me down with its weight. The armor didn't save me this time. The bite got through my defenses and now I had a large bleeding wound. Even though I managed to quickly free myself from it, the beast was still near, and ready to strike. I was using the Nagenata to hold it away from myself by pointing the blade at it. Several attempts later, the beast suddenly decided to charge at me. I managed to block its way, but the beast continued charging. It smashed into the blade, wounding itself. While it was howling in pain, I counterattacked and cut it in two. After the beast was killed, I tried to bandage myself with a piece of the monster's skin. The blood-stained bandage was a quick way to get myself infected with something, but I had no other choice. It stopped the bleeding, and the rest will be a history. The dawn was approaching, and with the sky becoming brighter, I felt like I was very tired. I already spent two nights without a sleep, and after a fight, I was clearly out of juice. Despite that, I continued walking. It took me several more hours to find another landmark. This time it was a small campsite. It was abandoned around a day ago. Somehow, I had a good feeling about this place, and my sleeplessness also helped with making a quick decision to stay here for today. I reignited the charred wood, hoping that the fire will scare off some beasts. Then I lied down near it, and covered myself with the tails. The moment I closed my eyes, I fell asleep. When I woke up, something was not right. Why is this ground so comfortable? And why am I being hugged from behind? V1 rewrite CH4, a captive, a warrior, and sitting in CIs a why am I being hugged from behind? I feel warm. Let me lie like this. Just. A bit. Longer. I have no idea where I am. But for now. What happened? Where am I? I jumped up. Then the world around me started spinning and I fell down. Why can't I stand up? Are you alright? Through the throbbing in my head I heard a loud female voice. I looked in a direction of that voice. My sight is blurred, so I can't see anything. Fight or flight? I don't know if they are friendly. And if they will skin me, hiss. I hissed at the voice, and showed my canines. See calm down. The voice was spooked. And stepped back. I continued hissing but did not do anything more than that. I couldn't even stand properly. 
so fighting was out of question. Everything is all right, little fox. The voice tried to approach me, but before it got close, I decided to strike. I mustered all of my weakened strength, and leapt at the female, trying to scratch her with my claws. I couldn't even approach her, and had to try falling back at least somewhere. Don't worry, little fox, I won't hurt you. The voice sounded tender and nice, but from the way it dodged my attack, I could clearly tell it can take me down any time. Almost blind, and barely standing, I started to feel my legs shake, not only from me being in a bad state but also from fear. The voice tried to approach me again, so I used my last resort. Wow. Hey, see calm down. I created the fox fires, and while the voice was scared away, I crawled backwards until I hit a wall. The voice continued approaching. I have a slight chance to knock it out, so I charged again. Sorry. The voice shouted, and then, I lost consciousness. And email protected at. And? Hash at and carrot. My mind was in haze. I started hearing unknown voices around me, but I couldn't even lift a finger. I had no strength to fight and was completely at their mercy, left with nothing but my tears. Something touched my forehead. It was cold and pleasant, and soothing, but then I felt like something touches my body. I jolted and tried to stand up to run away, only to totter and fall. I did not feel an impact. Instead, I was caught by unknown hands. Why did they catch me? Why not let me fall? Am I their catch? Are they enemies? Are they not? Soon I lost consciousness again. When I woke up, I found myself lying on a bed. On a seat near me was standing a bowl with a towel in it. I couldn't stand up or move properly, but at least I could clearly see and understand what was happening around me. While I had nothing to do, I started reflecting on what happened back then. I was bitten, but how? The goblins couldn't do anything, and a mongrel managed to? This doesn't make sense. Maybe the world punished me for not saving those people, or the god, or the system, or whatever else. Just like when you get karma assigned to you, and for my bad karma, I was punished. Those darned bastards. First you make me a piece of rubbish, and then you make me fight a horde of huge scary beasts. Just how does IT work? Creek my thoughts were interrupted by a creek. Somebody entered, and approached the bed. A young woman put her hand on my forehead. You finally woke up. She was relieved. I was very suspicious of her. But this time I decided not to attack. I remained silent. How are you feeling? The woman soaked the towel, and tried to put it on me. Who are you? I barked with a hoarse voice. I am Alina. We picked you up near a campfire. You were in fever. E, then why am I here? I continued the interrogation. Because we took you with us. She answered without hesitation. Why not just abandon me? Why would we abandon a dying person? We already lost out friends, and then we had to leave another one to die? The woman exploded. Maybe they passed by the campsite to meet with that group, understood. Where are we, then? In Crystal Town, near the main road. Two days of traveling from the place we picked you up. Nothing rang a bell, so I continued listening. Well, I answered your questions. How about you answer mine? She stared at me, not interested. I turned away, and tried to stand up. Seating myself was easy. So was standing up. But standing was not. Why are you so stubborn? Elena caught me before I fell. Do I have a reason to care? Thank you, and everything. But I am not a nice person to be grateful to the point of entrusting myself. Immediately after she sat me on the bed, I tried to stand up again, and again, and again. The best result I got is sitting on the floor, without falling to a side. You are something. At this point she abstained from trying to stop me. I tried to make myself at least comfortable on the floor. How I managed to properly sit myself in see Izu is a mystery. But it is better than sitting like a toddler. Did you wake up? Then the door opened, and a male flew in, making me fall from the surprise. Hiss. Sorry? The male looked at me with repentance, but I continued hissing at him for nullifying all of my struggles in one swoop. 
Why don't you just return to the bed? Sitting on the floor is not going to help you recover. E, and lying wood? I glared at them. Come on, Elena. Have you heard that children always want their efforts to be recognized? I lit up the fox fires. Why don't we talk about something else? Flowers? Little fox, what flowers do you like? That guy tried to shift my attention, but this childish trick did not work on me. Especially when those two think I am a child. Please, don't be mad at him. He is just an idiot. Alina sighed, and cautiously offered her hand. I dissolved the fox fires. At least for now. V1 rewrite. CH5. The first thing to do after reincarnation in a fantasy world for the following three days I was resting. Alina and Albert. That bastard who called me child, took care of me. They were part of the group called Rogues, half of which I saw killed by demon hounds back then. Have you seen what happened to them? While Elena was trying to have me talk, we touched this subject. I was still reluctant to talk to them, especially about the death of their comrades. I doubt they'd like to hear that I just watched them die. Well, I saw what was left of them. You are lucky girl. When the demon hands appeared in the vicinity, they attacked many. We barely fought them off. E. They caused some havoc. They surely did. We two were busy with another quest, and were supposed to join later. You, and the rest of the rogues took the initial onslaught. I saw a dead demon on our way. Nice job you did with a spear. Albert showed me thumb up. I decided not to mention that most of the job was done by the Najanatu and the hound. So. Are the demon hands dealt with? We were not sitting idly. Neither were the other adventurers. Elena proudly smiled. Adventurers? Yes. We are the people who get paid for killing monsters. And doing errands such as escorting an exploration. E. Wow. I was somewhat impressed. This typical cliché development was not too surprising, though. You know what, little fox? Why don't we stick together? E. I get where this is going. I will give it a thought. Great. Let's go. Albert headed to the door but he stopped after noticing that I didn't move an inch. What's wrong? A. Eh? Are you sure you want to take me in? You have no idea who I am. Or what I am capable of. Yes, little fox. We already talked about it. You showed yourself to be really stubborn and strong. E. Eh? This is not too bad. I may get a good chance at having freedom of movement under the excuse of doing quests, but then I am also going to be tied to those two. While I was racking my brain on whether I should join them or not, I decided to check the details. Ding! You received one upgrade point, one silver coin, one B1 M torpedo bombers group. I immediately understood that the point must be spent to increase the avenue. Now that I have a proper damage dealing aircraft I was capable of doing at least something. With 1% of the true power, the B-1M torpedo bomber carries 1x 18 inch torpedo or 2x 240 kg bombs. Even 2.4 kg of explosives can deal a lot of damage. If they can hit something, you still don't like talking to us. My thinking was interrupted by Alina's voice. Should I? Well. We did nothing bad to you. A, eh? yet. Seriously. Elena glanced at the bed, reminding me of the efforts she did to help me with the fever. Fine. You can call me Fuji. That's a funny name. Albert was amused. Good for him. One more reason to burn him. Whack mind your manners. Elena glared at him. And the next moment she was gently looking at me. The woman squatted to the level of my eyes. So, Fuji, will you join our party? E. Eh? No promises. I will give it a try but don't expect anything extraordinary. Something tells me that I am about to do the main cliché of fantasy novels. Yes, I am about to register as an adventurer. Alina and Albert led me to a large three-story building. Its first floor was made of stone but the other two were wooden. Few of the town's buildings were stone, so nothing surprising. When we entered I saw a spacious hall with some sort of a dining area near the entrance. Most of the people here were unshaved brutes, armed and armored. Some of them were eating, some were standing in queues near the back wall, and a bunch were standing near a board with lots of papers pinned to it. My next step was obvious. I had to register, 
so I headed towards a queue in the back. Suddenly, one of the eating guys stood up and blocked my way. It was so expected that I almost wondered why it happened only now. The bull-like guy was looking at me from above, and in his eyes was reflected my small body. Like a typical idiot, he was grinning at me, thinking that I am yet another newbie, who will be intimidated. What an idiot. Well, he is even armed with a halberd, the weapon of a true pro. My Nage Nata will confirm, where are you going? Sweetie, have you lost your parents? Come with uncle, I'll feed you. He was trying hard not to laugh at me. I only glanced at him with apathy. This place ain't for little gals. While I was wondering how I should deal with this scripted encounter, a true nuisance appeared. Stop that, you pedophile. What actually drove me crazy was not the stupid pile of muscles that blocked my way but the imbecile guy who appeared between us. I summoned the Najnata, and prepared to take down both of the troublemakers in one go. Alina patted my shoulder, and we went to the registry, leaving two idiots to bicker at each other. If things go well, they might even kill each other. What do you require? A clerk cast me with a bit of suspicion. I am here to register as an adventurer. Aren't you to you? I am here to register. My words were backed by the Najinatu and two fox fires, making my offer irresistible. Please, follow me. The clerk had to accept, though he was clearly not convinced. As I suspected, I was led to some sort of a training ground. Please, wait here. The instructor will arrive soon. The clerk left me here, and returned to the building. During a very long waiting, I was sorting out my munitions, the aircraft groups and their patrol schedules. Well, I am a carrier after all. Soon enough I will need to go outside. When the instructor arrived I had to stop whatever I was doing and concentrate on him. So, kid, you are the one who wants to join the guild? Yes, I am. Major warrior? Want to find out? I drew the Najnata polished to the point of its blade being like a mirror. I really had nothing to do while waiting. The instructor looked at me with pity. Don't say anything. I am already angry with that kid thing. Don't test your luck. I charged at him. Before he could prepare, the instructor evaded the thrust of the Najnata, and immediately kicked me in the belly, which threw me back. He rushed at me, evaded the swing of the Najnata and was about to thrust his sword into my neck, but I was prepared, nice dry, instead of backing away, or trying to stop him with the Najinata's pole. I swung the weapon back at his legs, the back of the blade hit, and the attack made the instructor fall. I immediately swung the Najinata, and tried to cut him in half. He deflected the blade with his sword, but the blade cut his arm. I guess you passed. The instructor pressed the wound on his arm, and nodded towards the building. When I returned to the registry, the clerk handed me over a tag. Here is your tag. You've been assigned rank G. Do you need an explanation of the rules? No. The rogues will teach me. I heard they lost two men, so they recruit the newbies? Care to test how new I am? A pleasure doing business with you. The clerk stopped this conversation before I could do something bad. V1 rewrite, CH6. Always trust your pilots so, have they registered you? Elena waited for me at the dining area. Yes, they must have been surprised to see their precious instructor almost being cut in two. I deserved my right to brag. I defeated him fair and square, and it didn't even appear like he was holding back. Good job out there Tilda. She was smiling like a mother, whose child just made its first steps. Never mind that. Fuji, can you please? I glared at her. Never do that. Again, I dispelled the fox fires, and waited for the second idiot to come back. Sorry to keep you waiting. I found a good quest for us. Exterminate a group of goblins that is just a few hours away from here. The second idiot was pleased with himself and forgot that he did nothing in comparison with me. Come on, Albert, look at her. Alina nodded towards me. Now that I had his attention, I stood in a guts pose, though he was confused. 
he quickly corrected himself, and tried to pat my head, to which he almost got a fist in his face. Great job. Whatever you did. Eh? I pretended that I didn't hear the last part. Where is the goblin lair? Alina looked into the information on the quest, and quickly marked it on a map. Are we ready to move out? Then what are we waiting for? Are you sure you didn't forget anything? Eh? What could I miss? I was confused. You are going to travel wrapped in a bed sheet? It took me some time to understand what he meant. However, when I got it, I did not hesitate to take the Najnata. Albert, I think those are the clothes, and she looks to be displeased with your words. How about you apologize? E, this is a kimono, Japanese traditional dressing. If you have any problems with it, please. Wicked grin. Don't hesitate to tell me. I perfectly heard their little talk. Ara, Ara, why did those two suddenly start sweating Tilda? Since there was nothing more to discuss, and I considered myself ready, we headed out as soon as they picked up their gear. Now that I had an ID, I could freely come and leave this settlement. As long as I am not followed by those two, we headed towards the site where the goblins are. On our way I found an excuse to separate for a while. This while was enough for me to cross a couple kilometers. I sorted the air group, and started with searching for the goblins. The entire process took around 30 minutes, so the silly fools didn't suspect anything. I hope you will not lose consciousness again. Elena looked at me with concern. None of your business. I immediately proceeded to move. On our way I smelled something unusual. It was the smell of something burning. Something is burning. I remember there was a village nearby. Maybe they slash and burn on the fields? E. I'm sure they don't. At least not in the middle of this summer. A. Eh? Should we keep going? Of course we must check on them. Without caring for my opinion, Alina and Albert dragged me with them to the village. Under another arbitrary excuse I separated from them. The group of torpedo bombers was lined up at the aft, and prepared to sortie with the bombs. When my air support was launched, I hurried after the two idiots, who were rushing to the village. From the information my aircraft gathered, the village was under attack. Once again, I hesitated to intervene, but then I remembered that I may be punished again for idling. Drop the bombs, boys, the flight separated, and the torpedo bombers entered a slight dive, searching for targets. They dropped the bombs, and although the damage was minimal, I am sure I heard a ding, or two. By that time the fighters returned to and I prepared to arm the aircraft for the second sortie. Meanwhile, I was sorting the reports and what I saw from their view. I was quite surprised to see that the attackers are humans, and there are a lot of them. They appeared to be adventurers. My estimation was backed by several unexpected observations. I clearly saw their leather armor, many different types of weapons and combat classes. They are too diverse to be a group of soldiers and too equipped to be a group of bandits. Also they didn't loot the village. For some reason, they just slaughtered its population. I might actually start to just observe them. I would have some time to examine the attackers, and maybe even figure out their motivation. But for now I had to hurry and join up with the two stupid adventurers I travel with. If they get themselves killed, I'd had no idea where to go or how to return. When the second attack was launched, I hurried towards the village. By the time I arrived, the aircraft were already trying to help in bolstering the chaotic carnage that was occurring there. Several small explosions of bomb-sized grenades resonated around the village. With the somewhat successful air attack, I charged into the heat of battle. As I arrived, I saw how Albert was struggling against another adventurer. I immediately attacked, and missed both of them. I would be pleased, if I hit both of them. I continued swinging the Najnata, and the best I achieved was tripping over the weapons pole. When I looked at the fighting, I noticed that they both stopped, and were just looking at me humiliating myself. I was charged with fury, and managed to scrape the enemy's arm. That made him very angry. Watch out. A. Eh? Ping the adventurer aimed for my head but Albert's sword blocked him. I had to become serious. And even pray for my luck. 
Now that I was in the serious mode, I managed to chop off the adventurer's arm. It was not enough to take him down, and while I was trying to to fall from tripping, he counterattacked. Get them. Meanwhile, more adventurers rushed to us. Albert blocked them, and won me the opportunity to 1v1 the already wounded guy. All of my puny attempts resulted at most in flesh wounds and scratches. The robustness of the adventurer was surprising, but it was already the time to finish him. Bang he only managed to open his eyes in disbelief and slowly trembled. When I stepped back, his lump body fell down. Even with my pathetic stats I somehow killed him. How I managed to pull this off while having zero in firepower? A bomb? Exactly. A bomb. One of my fighters dropped its bomb on the ground. I lured the enemy towards it, and while pretending to attack with the Nage Nata, I set the bomb's fuse. I swear, that is exactly how it was. V1 rewrite. CH7. Dawn of the Monster I made one against one opponent, but the fight was far from being over. The aircraft that circled above the village reported that the majority of the adventurers started withdrawing. I found one group of three people not far away from here. That much may be handled by me. Good luck Tilda. I waved to Albert, who was having fun time fighting several enemies. While I was running, I had some time to look around. The enemies set on fire the entire village, and slaughtered lots of people. It is clear that they were trying not to let anybody survive. The reason is unknown, but I might have a chance at finding out about it from some of the surviving enemies. I hopped over a bunch of bodies. Just how many families have they killed? So brutal. And so stupidly unreasonable. I can't even imagine why they were doing it. It looks almost like they did it for fun. Well, I might as well have fun with them. In my way, I sneaked closer to the group of adventurers, and saw how they killed a woman in front of children. Then they proceeded to slaughter the screaming kids. Just why? Does it make any sense? Or has any military value? It's just violence for the sake of it. I stepped out from my cover, and the adventurers noticed me immediately. Drop that spear, girl. You are gonna fight? Ha ha ha. And the third guy just aimed a bow at me. Oh my. This is going to be bad for them. I rushed at them. And when I was about to strike, I tripped on the pole. At the same time, the bowman released an arrow. But since I fell, it missed. It took me quite an effort to approach the adventurers, though they didn't even try to keep me away, and then we started fighting. Ping ping what is it, you sorry excuses of men? Never thought I'd be invulnerable, I grinned, as their swords did nothing but scratch the paint on the belt. Swoosh while they were dumbfounded, I swung the Nage Nata and managed to kill both melee fighters with one slash. Lucky me. Seeing that I defeated the front line, the bowmen started fleeing. Pierce I had to throw the Najanatu and pray, and since I am such a nice fox girl, the gods heard me and my luck guided Najanatu hit the running bowman, cutting off his leg. Please spare me, he shouted, as I approached. Did you spare the peasants Tilda? I smiled, and prepared to interrogate. You either tell me who you are and what you are doing here, or I will start cutting your stomach. We were ordered to kill this village. We are just mercenaries. The blade was positioned for dissection. Please, I beg you. The blade touched his skin. I will talk. I will talk. Just stop. For now I stopped cutting him and held my blade. The duke ordered us to kill them. We don't know why. Please, be merciful. Ugh. I am as merciful, as you were. I didn't feel any pity towards this scum of a human, and I was not going to just let him die so fast. While I was crash testing his leather armor, I remembered that the fight isn't over, and that my poor aircraft are burning their fuel very fast. I can't land them here, so I must hurry to disengage. After I was done, I hurried to find Alina and Albert. Even if we didn't arrive in time. Those two were putting all their efforts into fighting the attackers. I turned around a corner, and found myself facing two more bad guys. Immediately, one of them started murmuring something. If I'm right, 
then his brown cloak must mean he is a mage. Before he had a chance to use magic at me, I attacked. My series of attacks was mostly about me fighting against my own weapons pole, and trying to at least land some hits. Not that I was surprised in any way. There were no sudden revelations, but I managed to at least interrupt the chanting by hitting the mage with the pole. Then, the second guy blocked my way, and didn't let me approach the mage, until it was too late. The mage fired a fireball at me and I sent my fox fire to counter it, the same way one counters fire with fire, because what is burnt cannot be burnt anymore, as one could expect. It didn't work out the way I expected it to. Fire reported on the flight deck, the bridge, the bow. Damage control teams were sent a deep male voice reported the status. I did not die from the fireball but it surely did a lot of damage. Not only did the fireball damage me, it also angered me to the point I became much more serious about killing them. No more fooling around, said I. And dashed to the mage. I was buried by his companion. While the swordsman was busy blocking my mage nata, I rapidly pulled it back, and swung the blade at his leg, cutting it off. Then I charged at the mage. When I was charging past him, the downed bastard grabbed my leg, so, as expected, I fell down. I barely stood up before he managed to hit me in the back. My arm made a ding metal sound which shocked the swordsman. His shock was imprinted on his face forever. When I pierced his neck with my mage nata, the mage himself was easily apprehended. It was the time to cross-reference the testimonies. Speak. I will never tell you anything. Instead of continuing this discussion, I prepared to cut him open. He remained silent. So I just started. No. You have something to say? P, please. I have. A, family. They too had a family. I looked at a bunch of dead bodies nearby. Mo.n.dotster. I only grinned at his declaration. I am worse than any monster. I started dissecting the major alive. After I was done with this one, I hurried to Alina and Albert. They were sitting on the ground by a charred house. Hey, Fuji. How are you? Albert was breathing very fast. He must be tired after all the fighting. Fuji, thank God. I was worried about you. Where did you even go? Alone. Alina was both relieved to see me. And angry at me. I tried to postpone the scolding. Did they flee? And that is her reaction. A. If he expected more from me. Then I can only pity him. Since you returned safely. Then we have nothing more to do here. E. There is something interesting. I interrogated one of them. Yeah. I heard it. Well, sorry, they were hired by some Duke guy. Anything rings? Yes, but first let's get away from here. E, then I will be going first. Just hang in there boys. V1 rewrite. CH8. When a fox just wants to fool around after I finished my private business I reunited with Alina and Albert, before they had a chance to ask what the hell I was doing. I asked them about a more pressing concern. So, who is the Duke? He is the second most influential person in the kingdom, right after the monarch himself. E, then why would he order to slaughter an entire village? This is not his land, so perhaps the landowners got into another feud? His lands border this area. E, Alina, you surely know a lot about it. Suspicious. See come on. We always need to know what the nobles are doing. If something goes bad, we will be the first to suffer. Just give them an excuse, and they may go to war with each other, and we'll be caught in between. E. I pretended to be thinking about it, and in the meantime I checked the stats. Ding you received 12 silver coins, 1 level point, type 99 secondary gun, 10 upgrade points IJN Fuji. CV, level 17, upgrade cap 40, FP, 4 one hundredths AA-1 one hundredth Avenue, 3 one hundredths Road, 1 one hundredth AC-3 one hundredths, main gun type 99 rifle secondary guns 1 type 99 rifle installed, 4 max, 
anti-aircraft guns zero and stalled, 8 max, I suddenly got a little fortune. But I had no idea if I need a lot more. Hey, Elena, can you tell me about the currency? The woman looked confused. You won't? I cutely tilted my head and put a finger close to my mouth. Okay, okay. There are four types of coins. Copper, silver, gold and platinum. 100 coppers equals 1 silver, 100 silver is 1 gold, you get it? E, not bad, said I, while thinking what should I do with 15 silver in my pocket, I just need 985 silver coins more to buy an upgrade point. I think we are done here, let's go. I beckoned them to go to somewhere. Should we return to the town? Albert noticed my hesitation and suggested returning town. Oh crap. We got a quest on us. Elena facepamed. I think they won't fine us for this. We should inform the guild about what happened. The town guard should be warned as well. A. Eh? I will look around. Where do you think you are going, little fox? Elena and Albert both grabbed me by my collar and dragged away. Carrier ops will have to wait. On our way back to the town we encountered a merchant caravan. Of course I never found it beforehand, because I could not launch my planes. I clearly got the reason why carriers are considered vulnerable. No planes, no eyes, and actually no hands. Where are you going, guys? A fat merchant asked us. Back to Crystal Town. And where are you heading? E. I will trade with Miska Village. M. Do they head where I think they do? I leaned to Albert. He nodded. Well, aren't you a lucky soul? Watch your mouth, beast. A guy to the merchant's side shouted at me, clearly ignorant of the fact that I am closer to a demon. Why am I lucky, girl? The merchant asked me with suspicion. If you arrived there three hours ago, we would be talking with your grave. What? M. Elena lightly whacked my head and proceeded to explain. The village was raised by a band of mercenaries. We did not arrive in time to save them. E, you better not to go there. There is only death, and runaway murderers. A, the merchant looked very grieved by it. Were your loved ones there? Yes. M, I looked inside a bag, and pulled out a pendant. Back when we were in the village, I wandered around for a bit and on a murdered woman I found the pendant. It got my attention because it was much more expensive than the other things I was seeing. Out of curiosity, I had opened it, and saw a family portrait. The merchant clearly resembled a man from the pendant. Were there your wife, son, and two daughters? How? He was staring in a complete shock. Then he noticed the pendant. I assure you, those who did it received their punishment. Here. I gave him the pendant. He looked at the portrait. Yes. It belonged. To her. Thank you. Girl. I was disgusted by a sight of a guy crying but. He has his reasons for it. So. I never expressed my condemnation. I feel like there will be a lot of travelers on their way to the village. We better hurry and report to the town guard. A. Eh? You better to return to. Elena beckoned the merchant. We will return then. There is no use wasting time to go there. The merchant switched gears quickly, and focused on the problem in front of him. The one, so called thank you very much. Akatsun Sama, ding you received one upgrade point for your good behavior for now I dismissed this notification and started to stare at the merchant. I did a lot of hard work and now I want some platinum coins to buy lots of upgrade points. How about I give you a lift? M, that sounds nice. My legs hurt a lot. E, the sooner we report the better. A, look over here. I did not agree. Where are you taking me? I was speechless because Albert just princess carried me into the wagon. I was too shocked to even burn everything. I, will let it slide just once. The road back to the town took just two hours. Thanks to the merchant, every one of us had something to do, so we separated. While Elena was reporting the attack to the guild, Albert went to the guard's post. Me? I was just eating my share of food. The merchant was generous enough to promise to fill my stomach with everything I want. 
Those were your words. Don't look at me with grief Tilda, thought I, while eating my tenth chicken. I spent the upgrade point into accuracy to have the entire 4% chance to hit something. After I was done beggaring the merchant, I returned to our temporary base in an inn. Alina and Alba were silently counting coins, and didn't even notice me entering. Looks like we have some money thanks to this sudden situation. Oh, you're back? Albert looked at me emotionless. The people have died. There is nothing to be happy about. Alina was pouting because of my words. I was thinking if I should just shut up and sit in a corner, but then I remembered all sorts of things those two did to me, and decided that it is time for a payback. Look at you. You accepted the money even though the people have died. I taunted them. Alina glared at me, and I clearly got that she is angry for real. Just how shameless one has to be to. Seeing that she was driven mad, I decided to try pulling out a peculiar stunt. I wonder if anyone really taught you manners. She was getting more and more winded up. At least I don't belittle myself by taking the dead men's money. You. And now that she is completely boiled, Chu I quickly pulled away, far enough so as not to be killed on the spot. WH Chua. Elena was getting scarlet pay your fine, for you have already made me embarrassed so many times, uh, girls. This is not my concern but. A, it surely is not. Me and Alina barked at him simultaneously. Come on. You liked that kiss. Didn't you Tilda? Equals O underscore W underscore O equals V1 rewrite. CH9. A child is found. You. Alina was furious thus making me grin even more. My little prank worked out perfectly. I made her angry and then soothed her. Well, perhaps just drew her attention elsewhere. This is not funny. She hissed when I was about to start laughing. Whatever you say Tilda. I smirked, and quickly hid behind Albert to avoid being strangled. Just in case, the two of them exchanged glances and pretended nothing happened. Afterwards it was time to discuss a more important matter. Should we even proceed with the quest at this point? E. I don't think there is a queue of volunteers waiting for us to abandon it. A. Are you sure we even have enough strength to take on the goblins? Too late to ask Tilda. Would we even try if we were not sure? We were given some time extension to complete, but we won't even have time to rest if we continue. E. Do we need much time? Cuddle that baby fox, and we are ready. I don't know if Albert's expression changed, but I surely know that my nails are much longer and sharper than they were when I was a human. Stop teasing her. Well, this little fox surely will be of use. Elena approached me, and then grabbed my waist. Why are you blushing, little fox Tilda? Then she dragged me to the bed. Maybe she did it for the sake of revenge, but little does she know. That pranks are easier to pull this way. To part her face with a cold Tilda to fill out her clothes with a toothpaste Tilda to we tea her bed near the Crowyuk Tilda or a West tea to let her sleep a lonely Tilda. My brainstorming resulted in a nasty trick I did to Alina at the dawn. Fuji E, a wet, red monster with a cat face shouted something. Of course, I, should, just, do that a l l tilde, Fuji. A, when you've started, don't ho l d bar c k tilde. They were so funny to tease, that I might get used to pulling pranks on them. In the aftermath, I was forced to sit in Caesar until they finish the breakfast. Were they expecting me to feel remorse? Fuji E. A, guys, you, must, never, forget, your, sir LT Tilda, you little pain. Why? Elena was still pouting at me. You are fun to watch. How is this related to the pranks? Albert was just sighing. You react much better when pranked. Kai ah, uh, you little bastard. Feel my wrath. Elena, stop touching my ears. Don't you dare to forget about me. A. Kai Uyua. Stop pulling my cheeks. The rest of the morning passed quietly. When it was closer to the noon, 
we headed out to try subjugating the goblins once again. After I finally launched my fighters, I could be at ease, and finally had my detection range increased. On our way we found a fresh body of a wyvern. Let's cut off whatever we can. It would sell nicely. A, in the middle of butchering, I heard a ding. Ding you received 1x arresting wires. Rare, 3 silver coins. 1 upgrade point arresting wires. Allows the use of normal aircraft. Rare, minus 10% chance of missing the wires on landing. Minus 10% chance of crashing on landing. The upgrade point I spent into the accuracy and was quite happy that my combat capabilities have increased. What are you spacing out for? E. Why? Can't I just rest? You can, but only if you hug me Tilda. Alina was gutting the wyvern, and was covered in blood from head to toes. When a smiling blood-covered monster charged at me, I had to run. No. Yes. E. Only Albert continued working, and sighing while we were fooling around. Strangely enough, I found it funny playing and fooling around with the rogues, up to the point, when I entrusted myself as Alina's hug toy, but only after we washed ourselves in a lake, I wonder, why there are so many unused lands and so few fields and villages, almost everything is just a large plain without a single tree, it took us all the daytime to walk into a small grove, while we were drying our clothes near a campfire, I asked Alina sensei, hey, Alina, why are there so few trees around the town? When the first colonists arrived here, they started to cut down the trees for their fields and buildings. Soon they continued to cut down the forests to avoid monsters sneaking in. Then they continued to expand, to draw the monsters as far away as possible. That is why there are no forests around. E, at least that is what the legends say. Albert, I thank you very much. Actually, that appears to be true. Aerial Recon confirms that there are distinctive circle patterns round the town and the villages. First they cut down trees and made fields. Then they continued to expand around the settlements in a circular pattern. Then, I went on and on about the possible theories. I was only interrupted by a head pit. MHM? Just what you are thinking so hard about? E. None of your business. I turned away from her, but still continued to enjoy the petting. I was returned back to the reality only when the flight leader reported a large group of demon hounds to Anorth. They were heading in the direction of the town. I decided to use this opportunity to study the pack's behavior when under aerial attack. My fidgeting was quickly mistaken for the call of nature, so I hurried to do my version of picking some flowers. I loaded my torpedo bombers with payload, and sent them to bomb the hounds. Just a minuscule amount of rewards would already be a nice addition. Thirty minutes later, ding. You received twenty-six silver coins, three upgrade points, one weapon point, one B1M torpedo bombers group, one Type 99 secondary gun after I invested into even better accuracy. I was somewhat rigged for combat. Aircraft groups fighters torpedo bombers dive bombers A1N, installed, 1 of 8 B1M, installed, 2 of 16 uninstalled, 0 of 6 flight deck ready arresting wires installed, rare, steam catapults 1 uninstalled 2, uninstalled 3, uninstalled 4, uninstalled. Main gun type 99 rifle secondary guns 2 type 99 rifle installed, 4 max, anti-aircraft guns 0 installed, 8 max, what are you thinking about, Fuji? E, I made myself blush a little, Elena, you took my first kiss and now you are asking me that? I said that with embarrassment, oh, really Tilda? I took your first kiss Tilda? Elena immediately pinched my cheeks. You sure Tilda? She smiled menacingly, so I had to shake my head, to avoid my cheeks being played with. If you are so worried about it, why don't you kiss me as well? Stop grinning, you idiot. For ex Firi Timi, we continued chatting and fooling around. Then, suddenly, Alina and Albert drew swords, and prepared for combat. Soon I started to hear something approaching. Enemy inbound. A, 
v1 rewrite ch10 the last stand i immediately joined up with elena and albert and readied the nature we were looking into something approaching because i have a much better vision than the humans i saw the attackers from afar there are wolves and a lot of them those are wolves elena almost shrieked when a grayish tide appeared in front of us the beasts were almost mindlessly rushing at us allowing me to fully utilize the Najanata's inherent slash and forget attack. With one slash I managed to cut three wolves at a time, but there was at least a hundred of them. Because of my superior skills I had to stay away from Alina and Albert. At the corner of my eyesight I noticed that they stood back to back, and were repelling the wolves. After several attempts at biting me, the beasts realized that I am too armored for their teeth and concentrated on the adventurers. I tried to draw away some of the creatures, but I was not killing them fast enough to be of much help. Fuji, run. Albert started shouting when he saw that the wolves barely care about me. The fight is already lost. Well, we might as well all go down in a fiery blaze. I used my entire kitsune arsenal, the tiny fires that barely concerned the wolves and the Najanata which was somehow killing one of two unlucky wolves. Ha! Elena's scream reached me through the fur wall. Even though they are a constant headache, the voice of the rogue's distress made my blood boil. That is so weird. Just why am I getting anxious from that much? My anxiety was somewhat eased when I noticed that they are still holding on, despite wounds. But it was only temporary, as more and more wolves charged at the meaty adventurers. I was given some free space to flee, or to do something crazy. Will they even accept me having those otherworldly powers? I'm not a nice kind of protagonist to be just outright accepted as something normal, even though I split mountains with a spit. But if I won't use the ship girl powers, they are as good as dead, Fuji. Run away while you still can. Elena, I am sorry, but I shall not. Fuji, damn you, stop this struggle. Run away, save yourself. Albert, I am no longer running. Just hold on. It was the time to summon the gear. All twelve tiny aircraft were parked at the deck, and their engines started coughing. Vroom the first pair's engines reached the maximum RPM, and the aircraft accelerated towards the bow. What is going on? Both Alina and Albert were shocked. As I made the history, the battlefield will no longer be the same. Today, the war will change forever. And I am the herald of these changes. Two flights of torpedo bombers spread out to bomb the lives out of the wolves. Bang 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 after my three tiny rifles fired. The wolves were shocked even more and started running away. But even the combined bombing power of three flights would not be enough. Brave New World. At my shout two more flights appeared. As the wolves started scattering, the fighters herded them into a large group. Ratatatata to the straffs were making most of the wolves group even tighter into a large fur circle. Vroom at that time, the flights of torpedo carpet bombers entered the final attack course. The fighters too stopped attacking the outskirts of the wolves group, and turned at the middle of the group. Boom, rated to tar to bang 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 when the bombers were done. I prepared the flight deck. The stupefied adventurers were just watching how the carnage unfolded. FSHHHH as the amount of aircraft on the deck increased, the advantages of the angled flight deck became even more prominent. The torpedo bombers were landing one by one while the landed ones were being rearmed, There was no time to fuel them. As I threw the aircraft back into the fighter sap, mostly my role on the field was now to command the aircraft and coordinate their actions. By this point there was no need for me to actually participate in the fight, since the rifles were at most wounding few beasts with their accuracy and firepower. Unlike the aircraft, what is happening? Alina was the first to come back to her senses. I will explain everything later. Right now, you are better go bandage your wounds. Just a glance at the adventurer's shocked expressions was enough to make me wonder if we would even be capable to keep traveling together, not to mention just fooling around like we did before. But I couldn't keep on thinking about it. 
Not when every minute I had new aircraft land and sortie. Not when I had the entire ATC duties on me. Not when I had to plot courses for the attacks and returns. Finally, the wolves were either eradicated or ran away. After the last plane landed and was stored in my hangar, I faced Elena and Albert. Ask. What are you? E. Fuji is Fuji. I cannot outright tell them that I am a ship. It is better to let them think that I am some sort of a mage. At least they would understand it. If it is put in that way. You are you, but what was that flat board? What were those birds? What was making those flashes? A. I summoned my deck again and deployed an A1N. I am an aircraft carrier. Meaning. I can summon those little guys. I pointed at the fighter. Uh. E. Let us talk about this later. We all might use some rest. For now I decided to let them think about what happened and to have some rest. I left them to their own thoughts and went to search for a better observation spot. The aircraft required time to refuel and reload. Ding you received 230 copper coins, 15 upgrade points, 3 B1M torpedo bombers group, type 11 LMG, main gun, type 99, secondary gun, 1 weapon point IJN Fuji. CV, level 17. Upgrade cap 40, FP, 5AA 3 Avenue, 5 Road, 3AC 15. Aircraft groups fighters, A1N torpedo bombers, B1M dive bombers installed, 1 of 8 installed, 5 of 16 uninstalled, 0 of 6. Main gun type 11 LMG, secondary guns 3 type 99 rifle, 4 Max. Anti-aircraft guns 0 installed, 8 max, I closed my eyes and let the wind flow through my hair, I ceased to think, and just stood motionless on a small cliff, maybe I should write a haiku, V1 rewrite, CH11, a little hug fix after a lot of time thinking, I decided that I did the right thing by showing myself's capabilities, Alina and Albert were doing their best and helping me, even if I was a jerk to them. Not only did they not abandon me, but they also closed their eyes on many of my wrongdoings, be it my misconduct, or other unexplainable stuff, but I was no less anxious than before. I may have saved them. However, what if they decide I am too dangerous, or they get mad that I was lying to them for quite some time? I was fearing this outcome so much that I did not turn around to face Alina and Albert. What the people don't understand. They start to fear that. What the people fear. They want to destroy. What they want to destroy. They hate it the most. Maybe it, it is better to make them hate me to the point they will leave. People are sincere only in love and hatred, or so some say. At least I won't have to see them tremble in front of me, you know that I indeed was near your comrades that day. I didn't help them even though I was close. Knowing how bad you are with that spear? Eh, hey, do you know that I found that village and knew about what was happening before we arrived? Yet, I heard a weird sound while I was fighting there, which means you helped them. How can you be blamed for what happened there? E, such a childish reasoning. You are two naive fools. Why do I like you two so much? Why are you still here? Do you not think I won't silence the witnesses? Would you Tilda? Alina giggled, which made me turn around. The two of them were standing behind, and smiling. They were not trembling, and neither they were appearing to be disgusted by me. At such moments in fairy tales, the villain should start to cry in repentance, you know? I showed a fist to the clown guy, but I still was not ready to keep talking. Can I have some time alone? I myself need to calm down. You don't need to act tough. We'll set up a campfire. And you can rest all you want. Just don't run off. Alina frowned, and immediately smiled again as she walked away. Albert followed her. Some time later I approached their campfire. Here she comes. The lost child has returned. Ho! Oh, instead of pointing those fires at me. How about you bake the potatoes? A. Eh? Am I an oven to you? Stop this, you two. Alina stood up, and approached me. Huh? Then she hugged me, and lifted me up. Her embrace was warm, and nice. 
It was so good, that I felt sleepy. Looks like someone is about to doze off Tilda. Sleep well, little fox, because tomorrow we will continue traveling. I made myself comfortable on an improvised pillow, that pillows, and fell asleep. Even when I woke up I was still being hugged. Alina was already awake, and stirred something in a small pot. Good morning. E. Morning. Can you stop hugging me? I rubbed my eyes. No. Somehow her tone suggested she was mad at me. Come on. I am not a little. I pushed myself out of her bosom, and sat down on her lap. What I saw when I separated from her was closer to a Hanya, than a human face. I can begin the interrogation, right? She started to sound much more intimidating. Her attitude started changing exactly when I tried getting away from her, so I pushed myself back into her bosom. Good girl. First, why the hell do you have three tails? E, what? I only have two. I know better then, count them yourself. One, two, three. If there is a direct relation between my fox fires, and my tails, then it was a must to test that. Wow, stop. E, yes. The fox fires, are much better, and I can make even three of them. I turned my head and smirked at a certain someone. You have something to say, little fox. Maybe something about the reason this happened? My smile immediately was replaced with shivers, as Hanya looked at me with a gentle smile. I have no idea how that happened. I guess that much, but you should be knowing why it happened. E. Did I never mention that I am a demon fox? You are joking, right? E. You think? What are you two shouting? Can't you just let me sleep? Sorry to disturb, Elena, can you finish breastfeeding her faster? Commencing the first test fire in 3, 2, 1. I, I am not, it's just. E, why are you blushing? It was a great opportunity to distract her and run away. Sit down, right here. Actually, coming to think about it. Her lap is not so bad, right? Remember for the next time, that she returns from the kingdom of distraction faster than I can run away. Suddenly, Elena's embarrassment reached the point when she would be releasing pillars of steam. However, the way she looked at me was weird. Fuji, do you want to? You know. She started acting all bashful. If it's running away, yes, why am I even asking? What she did afterwards was dong ridiculous. It all started with untying the leather armor on her chest. What the hell are you doing? Stop right now. It was my turn at becoming as red as a strawberry syrup. It did not last long, since the sight was also replaced with my face being pressed into. It is not that bad actually. Just what the hell is going on? Where am I? What happened? Test your own medicine, you little bar. Ah. You want this? I won't refuse the offer then. It did our key miss you. I got it. I am wrong. Let go of my nipple. She awoke the beast. A fluffy little fox to be exact. After the things calmed down we started to discuss our next course of action. So, we will continue the quest even after all that? Albert was sitting near a pot and kept stirring whatever was there. We now have the great fox with us. Why should we stop on what we accomplished? Elena was sitting a bit further from him. On a couple of wolf furs. Maybe we should be going already? Said this humble me, turned into her hugging pillow. First I will feed you the soup, then we will be going. E, yes, mother. S, I am in trouble, say that again. E. Yes, mother. Just kill me already, so good. I noticed that she was melting, why the f did we become a father-mother fox family? The hot pot is ready. At Albert's notice, my fate was sealed. Say triple underscore a apostrophe tilde. As the spoon approached my face, a lot of painful memories of spoon feeding later. It's time to go. You too. A, yes. Yeah, let's get going, said Alina and stood up, with me still caught in her hands. She was radiating happiness, and her fuel was my suffering. Being embraced, kissed, and other stuff, by a girl is nice and I would be ecstatic to have it in my previous life. 
exactly because I would feel it as the one who receives it, and not as the one being a girl's daddy fox, can you put me down on the ground? Neve Atilda. She happily chirped, her affection was like a poison, and I started having regrets that I decided to stay here, with them. I should have just ran away while I still could. V1 rewrite, CH12, Tora Tora Tora. It took us almost an entire week to reach a forest. Here we will have a little chat with the goblins. And after we are done convincing them to stop harassing the local population, we will return and take another quest. Such is the life of the adventurers. Fuji, what is the plan? While we were still standing in the open, Elena asked me the most important question. First, I will send the air patrols. Second, torpedo bombers will be prepared to attacks from above. What do you want to do? A. I will attack the enemy before they can do anything. While they will be emerged into the chaos of combat, we will rush in and start killing them. You will be covering me from the flanks and I will be firing my weaponry. We have no bows to attack from a distance. E. But I do have guns. Rate it out to bang bang that should be enough? Alberts was quite skeptical about my performance, not that I think differently. That should be sufficient. I said that before my voice was suppressed by a humming sound of four aircraft. Operation begins. When the fighters left the flight deck, we headed out. Alina and Albert were glancing at me from time to time, or, rather, on the flight deck that was on me. It took a lot of time to lift the torpedo bombers and fighters to the flight deck, and part them away from the angled part of the deck to let the scouts land. While we are on our way, I will arm and fuel the airstrike, or at least the assigned aircraft which I managed to fit on the tiny appendix off the dangerous zone. That is the effective use of time, overall. I was prepared for attacking. However, the goblin's lair was still not found, and they could be anywhere, because they could be anywhere. We had to be stealthy, and for that reason I had to have the aircraft shut down their engines. Not only they would need a lot of time to simply taxi to the stern, they will also need to start the engines and take off. At the very least it will take 10 minutes. Still, that rapid deployment skill may prove useful in such case. Meanwhile, about our combat formation, Elena guards my left flank, and is supported by one of the rifles. Albert is on my right side. He would be assisted by two remaining rifles. The machine gun will be firing in front of me. I decided to maintain this formation even when we'll arrive. The aircraft will be my main offensive power, until we get the direct line of sight. It took us a few hours and sorties to locate the goblin village. When the scouts returned, landed, and were re-equipped, the master plan's execution was started. Time to make some noise. Alina and Albert stepped away from me, and watching in amazement how the little propellers were spinning up. When I only began to accumulate my air power, I only had four fighters. Now I prepare to sortie twenty torpedo bombers and the fight rescort. I still don't have enough firepower for a carpet bombing but for now this much should be enough. The entire forest vibrated together with the roar of the engines. The tiny pitiful biplanes were still a marvel of engineering, each capable of causing destruction at a large scale. Now was the time to learn how to operate large air group. I swung my right arm and shouted, take off. With the thundering sound of full throttled aircraft engines, my bomber's squadron began taking off. Pairs of aircraft were clearing the flight deck, and assembling above. Vroom when the last group took off. The aircraft set course towards the village. A tight formation of torpedo bombers was covered by flights of fighters that flew slightly higher to dive on any kind of offenders. From the perspective of the leading aircraft I was looking at the forest. In a little clearing I recognized the supposed goblins wooden shelters. Each group picked their target and each flight's leader plotted their course. Even after the aircraft showed up near the village. The goblins didn't pay much attention. There were no panicking goblins running around, and no arrows or magic shot at my planes. Tora Tora Tora, at the universal Japanese attack signal for aircraft, 
the formation broke off and the flights started executing the attack. My aircraft entered a slight dive, and its group prepared to follow the attack. Each aircraft will drop its bombs, with a delay to have an opportunity to change the target. If the prior pilot destroyed it, boom sounds of the explosions started reaching our ears from nearby. After the airstrike was sent, we continued moving, and were minutes away from the goblin village. What happened? A. The attack has started. Then. Why are we still here? A. Just to suffer? E and A. The bombs should be dropped before we arrive. Otherwise you will get caught in a blast. As you can hear. The goblins are having hard time. There is no much pleasure in being blown apart. Why are you guys getting so scared? It's fine, even my unarmored deck can survive a couple of such hits. Boom 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 I checked the situation. The aircraft regrouped after the bombing, and after everyone dropped the payload. The flights returned to the base, me. While the first flight of torpedo bombers was preparing for landing and the first aircraft was gliding towards the deck. I started loading the guns. V-U-U-T-S-H-H-H When an aircraft grabbed an arresting wire and landed, both Alina and Albert jumped aside and covered their heads. What happened? E, just another happy landing. Never mind that. Okay? A, V-U-U-T-S-H-H-H The shrieking sound of the arrest in wires and aircraft's frames injuring the loads was causing the poor adventurers to cover their ears and tremble. Looking at them was so fun, that I didn't even notice how one of the planes broke its gear on landing. Even though I successfully reached the pace where thirties after each landing another plane begins descending. This accident caused a long stop in landings, after this unexpected problem. We had a lot of time to get closer to the goblin village. When the last fighter touched down, we had to just walk a hundred meters. Vroom I sent out a flight to search for any survivors. As we stepped out of the forest, we all saw the carnage that happened. The entire village was turned into a moon surface filled with craters and debris. In this debris were hiding the surviving goblins. Ratatata all that is left for us to do is to clean up. V1 rewrite CH13. A short break before the new adventures after we cleaned up the remaining goblin scum, we returned to the town. I am so tired. E. Yeah. Just why did we loot everything from those goblins? It's not like they'd pay us much more. A. Shut up. Albert. Much more. Ha. Huh? Ten silver plus goblin ears sold will give us more than enough cash. E. A coin for bringing two bags of spoils. Count me out. A. Whiners. Just how did you not get tired? E. R. Whatever. We're already here. I'll go report, while you'll find us a nice watering hole. With this, Albert entered the guild. Ding you finished the quest. You received one steam catapult. Epic. Two upgrade points you received one group of A1N fighters, seven upgrade points, one type 99, secondary gun, 20 silver coins, two groups of B1M torpedo bombers, one type 99, AA gun, one HO 103 HMG, main gun, what is so epic about that catapult? Steam catapult. Allows the catapult launching of one aircraft per catapult. Epic, minus 50% catapult reload time, minus 50% catapult malfunction chance, minus 25% G-force impact on aircraft during the launch. I take my words back, it's a really great item. Can I improve it further? Weapon upgrades applied steam catapult. Allows the catapult launching of one aircraft per catapult. Epic, grade 2, minus 60% catapult reload time, minus 60% catapult malfunction chance, minus 35% G-force impact on aircraft during the launch. IJN Fuji, CV, level 17. Upgrade cap 40, FP, 5AA-3 Avenue, 10 Road. 3AC-19 Aircraft Groups Fighters A1N Torpedo Bombers B1M Dive Bombers Installed 2 of 8 Installed 7 of 16 Uninstalled 0 of 6 
main gun her 103 secondary guns Ford Type 99 rifle, 4 Max, anti-aircraft guns 1 Type 99 rifle, 8 Max, flight deck ready steam catapults 1, installed, epic, grade 2, 2, uninstalled 3, uninstalled 4, uninstalled the rest in wires installed, rare, if only I had a proper aircraft, not those plywood kites, Alina and I were sitting in a pub, and waiting for the final participant of the celebration, phew, we got two silver, tonight we're drinking until we pass out, A. Eh? the result of the quest was, we got drunk, Fujitilda, wanna hux, E. no, stay away from me, you meanie, E. correction, they got drunk, I was not getting drunk even after drinking two buckets of ale. After the two drunkards were done, I dragged them back to our room. After I entered, I expected that either of them will kill me. Luckily, they both started to hug each other, so at least they won't be suffocating me while I sleep. The next morning, Screech why don't you experience this yourself? You cheeky bastard. A, eh, I am sorry. Can you say that louder? I will make you suffer, little fox. You wait. E. Good luck doing that, my friends. After they overcame the hangover we started to discuss our new endeavor. What is our plan? To take another quest? A. To travel somewhere. E. Great, let's take a quest and travel far away from here. We have paid for our room in advance, you remember that, right? A. All right, all right. What quest will you take? Another extermination. A. Go to hell, Albert. We were almost killed a few times this week. Elena almost read my thoughts. Too much fighting for me. An escort mission for a merchant? A. Sounds like a plan. I don't remember that there were many bandits and a monster nearby. E. Then it's decided. A. Good luck, guys. You are not going? A. Have you ever asked my opinion? Did we have to? A. Eh? Of course. No, we don't need that. Albert can go by himself, while I can just remain with you. I feel a strong desire to hug something warm and fluffy. E. Shut up. So, your choice is? Look, I am asking your opinion Tilda. E. Go to hell. Now, you will just do it anyway. I prepared to be fluffed. What have you said? E. Nothing. I was relieved. Since the task wasn't something extraordinary, there was no need to do too much of a preparation. Albert just went to pick us a quest, while I was tortured by Alina. The quest by itself is simple, escort a merchant to another town. The problem is that I can't use any aircraft or guns. No guns, no glory. If we end up in a fight, Unlike with those silly adventurers I won't have a chance to have the people look over it. Don't worry that much Tilda. We did a plenty of such mission Tilda. A piece of cake Tilda. E. Yeah, sure. My ears already went numb from all the petting, so I just decided to reflect on whatever was going on previously. For example, on the way I conducted aircraft operations. Even though most of the things were automated, like I didn't actually need to do all the ATC chatter to land a single plane. There were still many ways I must learn, and many improvements I must make. Sci studying is such a painful process. Ow! It'll be alright Tilda. Let me pat you a bit more, and you'll feel even better Tilda. When her hand reached for my chin, and started scratching it, I just did what I was ought to do for a long time. Bite Kaya Fuji while she was surprised. I slipped away and escaped outside. I escaped right at the time Albert was returning. So, are we ready? We should be. The merchant was happy to have escorts, and can move out in two days. Where is Alina? A. She is busy bandaging her wound. Sorry. A. I just pointed at my canines. What were you talking about? At the same time, Alina exited the inn. Nothing much. We were discussing your combat wounds. A. Eh? Screw you. At least she lets me pet her, unlike. Before she finished, a hand was put on my head, and started moving back and forth. Foxfire Tilda. Why you know W what Tilda? 
I remembered something important. A. Have you forgotten to turn off the stove? The payment will be better than what is written and we will be provided with food and water. A. R. Great. However, changing the topic didn't work. Two days later, when the merchant arrived I saw that the merchant is quite a familiar one. And the merchant's face twitched when he remembered me. Thank you for the meal back then. Hello, I believe we've met already. M. Um, hi, in which wagon you placed my food? He twitched again. It just had to be you, little glutton. M. Um, well then Tilda, let's talk, while enjoying food Tilda. In exchange for me not eating everything in one swoop, the merchant agreed to tell me every single rumor he knew from the area and beyond. It would be a very enlightening experience. Since I may get a bit closer to learning about this world, and as such, could make sure nobody would go after my pretty hide. I sat beside the merchant in the first wagon. We will have a lot of time to chat and I will have no trouble protecting him. Or so he thinks, you bet I will miss 99% of my attacks because it will be a bad day. Alina and Albert are sitting in the last of four wagons. They will be our rear guard. Aside from having a good amount of food, and protection from being fluffed by two crazy adventurers, I will have to guard the caravan at night, because I am a nocturnal fox and because I already got too many concessions. Also, it will be a nice experience of using my senses to detect threats, without using aircraft all the time to spot in my stead. V1 rewrite, CH14. Another fight with an ancient enemy I still don't understand. Why you decided to become an adventurer? M. Um, I was just bored. There is no other reason. You were bored. What a great reason to risk your life, does it make you happy, or you like this feeling of having yourself in danger? The merchant was asking me more and more questions, the last of them has no exact answer. I didn't actually think about it, I just went with the flow, since there was nothing else that crossed my mind. What flow? M, the guys I'm with, I spent some time with them, and decided to keep traveling with them, I like teasing those two. They are funny, the job itself would be just a routine without such little joys. Out of the two days of the scheduled traveling we spent one, and by the evening we would be approaching the destination. By now we didn't encounter anything. Right when I thought about that, the horses became anxious. I grabbed the Najnata, and jumped off. What, did something happen, girl? An ambush. Stop the horses. I leapt towards a bush. Something rushed out of there, and then was followed by the other attackers. I am getting tired of the goblins. The height of an average goblin is one meter. They have very skinny bodies so if I hit them properly, they will be dead for sure. They appear to be small fries but my research, however, showed that they are adapted for combat. With their crude and rusted weapons they appear to be harmless but if there are a lot of them they will be deadly. My first strikes were as useless as ever, and soon I was surrounded by a lot of them. Later I will pretend it was intended, since in fantasy goblins like to take pretty girls. Luck, where are you when I need you? Swoosh with a slash I killed a large number of goblins, either by cutting them in half or smashing their bones with their dead comrades. Immediately after I created fox fires, and burned everything around me. Well, just burnt a couple goblins who were too slow to evade small balls of fire. And here I thought they can't get even more disgusting. While I was preparing for another strike, the goblins overwhelmed me and started to hit me with whatever they had. No damage was suffered. I spinned with an Ajnata, and scattered them round. Pierce Najnatu is somewhat a hybrid of a spear and a sword, so it is capable of piercing. Though its wide blade is a bit of an overkill, don't you think so too? I asked a goblin who struggled to pull the blade out of its stomach. I already established my total domination in the fight, and most of the goblins ran away. I was just cleaning up the survivors. Hold on. A. We are coming. E. Oh my. What a great timing. I really need your help. Thank you for your assistance. I said that in monotone voice, while cutting in half another goblin. Why are you even here? While I was distracted, one of the bastards dared to hit me in the back. 
It thrust its sword with such strength, that it bent after hitting my armor. P.E.I. When I turned around, I did nothing but look at it. However, my intimidatingly cute appearance, unaffected by the splashes of blood on me and my clothes, made the goblin shiver in terror. I decided to let it die, very very slowly. Master, we have a problem. A butler entered his master's room. What happened now, you idiot? A fat man asked him while holding back his wrath. The security team we dispatched to protect our village. They returned. They reported that the village was slaughtered. B. What? Who dared to attack my lands? M. They said that the village was attacked by a group of adventurers. One of them was a beast. B. Then find them. I want to bring those abominable murderers to justice. Master said that with a disgusted expression. However, deep inside he was smiling. No longer would he need to find the culprits for the murder. He already has them. It was all going as he wanted it to. His rivals hired mercenaries to attack his lands, and he will report it to the king. Then the king will have to do something. If he can prove that the adventurers were hired by one of the rivals, then he will have all the reasons to send his own army to attack those puny nobles. Their lands will be a fine addition to his fief. Please, we are very sorry. Can't you just forgive us? E. Come on. Fuji, you are too fast for us. A. You either arrive faster, or don't show up at all. Instead of answering them I shouted at the merchant. We should move, I expect that there are many more and they will come here. We boarded the wagons and the merchant tried to rush the horses but we still were moving too slow. Some goblins were already running out on the road, only to die under the hooves, or from being pierced by the Najnata. The grove is supposed to end soon, but it didn't make it easier for us. Now that the goblins smelt blood and honor, or whatever the reason they were so stupid to run like lemmings. V1 rewrite CH15. The master of war we successfully escaped the grove, and were no longer under threat of goblins. It was the time to have some rest. The word rest here just means slowing the caravan down, since neither of us wants to stay in the open where there are no less dangers lurking. Since the horses slowed down, and there was nothing threatening in the vicinity, I finally escaped the talkative merchant, and reunited with the rogues. Here you are, Fuji. How are we doing? Albert reached for a flask, and passed it to me. A lot of small fries. We are doing fine. How about you join us? Alina patted her lap, inviting me. That is why I am here. You don't expect me to sit on your lap, right? While I was trying to evade Alina's attempts at grabbing me and forcefully sitting me, I heard a shout. Someone. We need help. Why the hell would anyone shout? Not only did I not sit down in a quiet place, I also had to return to the front of the caravan, where the merchant sits. He just had to call for me, and not anybody else. What is going on? I immediately asked him when I caught up with the wagon. Look over there, girl. M. When I finally looked what is going on ahead I found the reason of his concern. It was a huge brown skinned something. There was no way to tell exactly what it was, since my eyesight is better only because it is night vision. And it doesn't let me see at long range. One thing I knew for sure, it was a monster and it was not going to let us pass in one piece. You two, stay here and guard the caravan. I shouted to the lazy bones, and headed out. After all, I am time sturdier. I can predict that whatever it is, the fight will be a problem for me, especially if someone was to be in my way. I faced the monster somewhere midway to the caravan. It was a huge creature with pig face, and a weird weapon, a mixture of a mace, a sword, and an axe. I assumed it would be slow enough for me to evade some of its attacks. With my tactic chosen, I proceeded. I immediately prepared to pierce the creature's stomach, but it swiftly parried the blade. Not only my opponent was huge, it was also fast and skillful. You kidding me? I sent fox fire, but it hit the orc's clothes, which turned out to be similar to leather armor. I continued trying to use my size and speed to my advantage 
but the few attacks that connected showed me that the creature is very sturdy, and the blade barely does any damage. While I was hesitating, it counterattacked, and I had almost no time to block axe sword thing. My Najinata's pole is stronger than it looks like so I managed to block this one attack, yet, I wondered if my actual armor will hold against such a strong hit, I was pushed back, and by the time I regained balance, the orc was already rushing at me like a train, it was clearly smarter than the stupid animals that charged at the Najinata, so I had no choice but to keep trying fighting. After all, hysterically swinging the Najinata might not be a skillful way to fight but at least it does its job well. My lacking skill resulted in me getting hit several times. At first I evaded one or two hits, resulting in glancing hits against my armor but the last hit was pretty bad, Pom I was hit in the chest, and there was an unpleasant sound of metal rasp. When I already started considering using the gear, I heard another shout. Just keep IT busy. The voice came from afar, and it clearly did not belong to the known people. Even though I was invigorated a bit, the fight was still proceeding worse and worse for me. When the monster prepared to swing once more, an arrow hit its arm, I didn't let this opportunity slip away and thrusted the blade in the orc's belly, the attack did little damage but was already better than nothing, watch out, a feminine voice shouted something and was followed by an arrow hitting the monster, a warning for me, thank you, the orc realized that I am a trouble, and started trying to keep me away, it was trying to kick me, and launch me away with its weapon, Ra. suddenly, it screamed, attack IT while you can. An unknown guy attacked its back. Without thinking too much, I charged at the orc, and poked it. The results were as discouraging as always, but it was damaged nonetheless. The guy and I were staying on the opposite sides of the orc, making it choose between us. Both of us were barely doing any damage, but the orc's irritation was quickly growing. Ruh. It swung the weapon at me and hit the top of my head, whatever it expected, it didn't work out, it was just a flesh wound, which only took away a few thousand HP, while that huge dumbass was processing what happened and why I am still alive, it got another hit from me, I performed a point blank fox fire attack against its face, the disorientated orc didn't notice me jumping up with all of my strength, I dived from above, and aimed the nage nut to pierce the monster's back, with the kinetic energy I gained, and the damage done to the orc's armor, the nage nata successfully turned into an armor piercing munition, reaching past the orc's hide, right into its soft insides, after a howl, the orc died, you did great, fox, you are something, a guy approached me, save your praises for somebody else, it was the worst of my fights, yes, but whom else should I congratulate, I doubt that killing it has much to do with our help. The guy grinned, another person approached me, good job, you sure are a sturdy one. It was a female archer, her face was covered with a piece of cloth but I could see her eyes that were blue, thank you for the backup. Is that all that is on your mind? You won the fight against the Orc King. The guy was staring with his eyes wide opened. Yes, great, you there, the road is open. I don't care what it was, I just want to get into the town and have some sleep, damn it, where are you heading? The guy beckoned me to follow him, he grabbed the orc's arm, and started pulling the monster off the road, I joined him in this endeavor. There should be a town somewhere, we are escorting that merchant caravan. We? Where are your companions then? The archer looked at me with worry. Those two are not strong enough for the talk. They remained with the caravan. There is only one town nearby, and it happens to be our home base. How about we accompany you as well? No money required, we just want to avoid walking there. We finished pulling the orc's body, and the guy was wiping off the sweat. Fine by me as long as the merchant is okay with that. And thus we gain two more escorts for free. V1 rewrite, CH16.
Those who run from glory always have it follow them when I reincarnated in this world I thought that it would be a nice walk in the park, from all of the knowledge I had about fantasy, and the knowledge of modern day, I expected that there will be no difficulties for me, it was further bolstered by my victories against the goblins, and the easy going lifestyle I had until now, until now, the orc showed me that it is too early for me to spread my wings and think I am invulnerable, the old saying that overconfidence brings carelessness proved to be right, and now I am reflecting on what I did wrong, to avoid doing so in the future, I understood that no matter how medieval this world is, it is way different from the real medieval, there are monsters and magic, metaphysics that challenge the knowledge known to me, and life that is not the same as what I knew of. Even the town that we were approaching was not a small settlement surrounded by a wall. It was what one would expect of a fantasy town. A large stone wall, surrounding a large settlement. What are you looking at? A guy patted my shoulder. I looked at his hand. It is bigger than I expected. What is bigger? He grinned. The town. Do you really think we can just understand what you are saying only after a few words? He said in disappointment. Not my problem. He was trying to start a conversation with me all the time but I was really busy with self-reflections. If Alina and Albert were funny to tease, and irritating only sometimes, this guy was irritating all the time, without offering anything in return. Why don't you go with us after we arrive? My father will be eager to reward you for your victory. Gee, this has nothing to do with me. So the orc died by itself? Gee, he is so bothersome, my current plan was simple. We arrive. The idiots go and look for whatever they want and report to the guild. Meanwhile, I fill my stomach with something tasty. Poor merchant promised to feed me. I certainly did not have to remind him that he is alive because of me. Do you have a boyfriend? That guy keeps showering me with weird questions. No. How about? He was about to ask a very rude thing but after I looked at him, of course I lit my eyes with magic, he shut his mouth. Before the guy managed to drive me crazy, the caravan arrived to the town. In front of us was a huge queue of wagons and people, all trying to enter the city through a large gate. Our accidental companions have unloaded themselves and I could finally relax and think. The calm did not last for long. Sweet fox. How about we go and have some fun? I know many good restaurants. This bastard started to hit on me out of the blue. Does he really think I am an idiot? Or that I am a cheap W? So yummy. Yes, I am very cheap when it comes down to food. Fight good means eat good. Am I right? The archer girl asked me something but I am too busy right now. Fate for, whatever, and dollar and, and, percent and and carrot percent carrot in percent. Hey, we are here. Suddenly the guy shook me. Doff to fee I am me often. Don't you see that I am eating, such a rude person. Don't tell me you didn't even hear what we were saying. I am few in you. I am telling you. When I was done eating. They told me to wait a little. That is why I just closed my eyes and returned to reflecting. And carrot percent, carrot dollar carrot. Percent carrot in percent dollar hash and and. Why do you keep shaking me each time something happens? When I opened my eyes I saw another person. A female in a white clean robe was sitting in front of me. If my guess is right she is either a priest or a mage. Are you always like that? Gee. I'm thinking, I'd recommend such an activity to you but you have nothing to think with. Ha? Huh? Gee, nicely done, Fox. The girl in robes said that to me and smiled. Is she the reason you told me to stay here? I asked the others. Yes, I get that you have a lot of things to do but at least let us introduce ourselves. Gee, no, tha, I'm Drake, leader of the adventurers party Blackstone. Gee. Marin, I am an archer as you can tell. A. Lily, I am a mage. G. Okay. I said that and tried to continue where I stopped. Stare stare. Stare fine. Fuji. You have such an interesting name. L. 
the adventurers started complimenting me, almost to the point of fawning over me. What do you want from me? I am getting tired of this, we want you to meet my father, come on, you killed the orc king. You should get the reward. D, say you are the ones who killed it. Miss Fuji, I don't understand what is the problem. Our father will be eager to meet with you. L, our. So you two are siblings? Yes. D and Del. I was getting tired of them trying to make me do something I didn't want to. Sigh all right, all right. You don't want to, so let's leave it at that. The next topic, why don't you join our party? You are a really good fighter. D, you know me for four hours? Are you crazy? Join us on one, just one quest and see for yourself if this will be all right for you. D, come on, I am already in a party. I said that while staring at the ceiling. W what a pity. Still, how about you help us on a quest? D, is your head filled with cheese? I don't want to. We may not look like it, but we are well off. You'll stay in this town for a while. So why not help us? We will hire you for this quest for a hefty sum. Interested? L, hire? W well. My hesitation was understood as acceptance. I will go and find us a quest. You ladies just wait for me. D. Afterwards, he ran out to the restaurant. Drake might look like a walking problem but he is not that bad. And if he praises you then you must be really good. I look forward to seeing you in action. L. Keep your expectation low. I barely hit anything. Just like that I agreed to temporarily join the Blackstone party. V1 rewrite. CH17. Reconnaissance by fire after Drake ran away to pick up a quest. The remaining members of Blackstone discussed the terms of our temporary cooperation. Through my diplomacy skills, or through pure luck, I managed to have them agree to let me take all of the spoils of the battle, as well as get my hands on a share of the quest rewards. Another benefit is that I might get a chance to see some proper adventurer combat, which I barely get a chance to see with our incomplete party. When Drake brought the quest, I found even more reasons to join the subjugation. The quest was subjugation of a wyvern. All that I managed to find about the wildlife of this world is that all flying monsters that can pose an actual threat are the wyverns. They are just one type of flying reptiles, the other being dragons. While dragons are much stronger, they rarely show themselves and prefer to use their servants to do the job. Not to mention that they are much more awkward in the air than the wyverns. This quest was a perfect way to find out about how the wyverns fare in combat, as well as obtain information on how I can find them. What are you thinking about? D. This is none of your concern. But we are comrades in arms now. Why don't you tell us how you feel? D. Comrades. Ha! Huh? As if I ever had a need to have you. Neither do I need to tell you something that is irrelevant to the quest. I have a strong feeling that something is not right about them. I should keep my eyes on them, so mean Tilda. D. Just how are we going to do this? We have only two actual ways to hit a flying target, Marin and her bow, and Lily, probably, and me, probably. One actually capable long-range fighter, and two half-useful mages. We have a plan. It's not our first time. Lily tried to sound confident, but I felt like she was just trying to cover up the fact we have no way of killing a flying wyvern. After all preparations were finished we headed to the nearby mountain range. I was told that wyverns nest on rocks and cliffs, so it was the first place I'd have to search. Our wyvern's location was already made known by the scouting adventurers. There was a nice mountain trail we used and it would lead us all the way to the nest. You've got to be kidding me. Rawr. The wyvern was sitting just 200 meters away from the start of the trail. Luckily for us, the monster had no way of immediately taking off, giving us a slight handicap. It charged at us with grace of a beached plesiosaurus, and I charged too. I just hope that Think doesn't spit flames. Rawr. The wyvern did not breathe fire and just tried to bite me. Its head was as long as my height, but its brain must be the size of a peanut, since its jaws were stopped with my Najanata's pole. 
How about somebody helps me? While the wyvern's head was still, an arrow hit its eye. Rawr. The monster had to stop pressuring me, and with Drake's arrival we started baiting the wyvern from the sides. When I accidentally missed with the Najnata, and made Drake evade my attack, the wyvern immediately grasped the opportunity and took off. You are not getting away. Lily shouted and started to chant. The girl created a large chunk of ice and launched it at the monster. The icicle damaged the wyvern's wing, stopping its attempt at fleeing. Now that it was completely cornered and had no way of fleeing, the wyvern went berserk. ra I'll handle IT. I immediately rushed to block the monster's path, and drew its attention. Even though my melee skills are negligible, I am still capable of holding a stick horizontally, while using my strength to stop the wyvern. The monster mindlessly pushed its head at me, and ignored whatever was happening around it. The Blackstone did not waste this opportunity. Drake was attacking it in melee, cutting its limbs and wings, while Marin and Lily were showering the wyvern with long-range attacks. The entire sight of a small girl holding a two-ton monster should be real to say the least. Luckily, I had enough time to pretend that I am F, struggling with my life at stake, and that I somehow mustered all of my strength to just hold it. There are people who can handle an entire truck driving over them. Am I worse than they are? Under the adventurer's onslaught, the wyvern received huge damage, and when it stopped pressing at me, albeit for a second, I pulled the Najinatu away and in a swift move I cut its throat. It was just finishing off a dying creature, but now I had a way to brag even more. All the way back to the city, the Blackstone kept on pestering me about expressing gratitude, and dragging me to that father guy. Now that I showed off even more, I had to pay back with my sanity. Lucky me, the city showed up sooner than I went crazy and murdered them all in a maniacal killing spree. I said that countless times already. No, we've arrived, so f off. Before they had a chance to stop me, I hurried away, mostly to sell some loot. Before I arrived to the Adventurers Guild, I opened the details. Immediately, my bag of wyvern loot vanished. Ding you received one gold coin, 93 silver coins, 35 upgrade points, 2 skill point, 1 weapon point. 1 Steam Catapult, Common, 2 Type 99, AA Gun, Type 99 Cannon, Main Gun, Type 98 Cannon, Main Gun, 3 Slash 40 Naval Gun, Main Gun, IJN Fuji, CV, Level 17, Upgrade Cap 40, FP, 10 AA-5 Avenue, 10 Road, 10 AC-40 Main Gun 340 Naval Gun Secondary Guns 4 Type 99 Rifle, 4 Max Anti-Aircraft Guns 3 Type 99 Rifle, 8 Max Flight Deck Ready Arrest in Wires Installed, Rare Steam Catapults 1 Installed, Epic Grade 2 2 Installed, Common 3 Uninstalled 4 Uninstalled Rapid Deployment LVL 2 Tenacity and Bravery, LVL 1, Brave New World, LVL 2, starts battle with 10% aircraft in air, every 30s shows your pathetic firepower, 5% bonus to FP and AA, on activation, launches special airstrike of A2N, B2M and D1A, can be activated every 1 hour, I guess that now I can ignore accuracy issues, it is either I hit something, or I blow it up, V1 rewrite CH18, conquering the skies after I got rid of the annoying Blackstone, I had to decide on my next course of action, naturally, since I learned that I can take down the Wyverns, and that their loot costs some cash, I proceeded with exterminating them, I picked up my porty, I mean friends, and headed out towards the mountains, so, what are we going to do? Porter asked me a weird question. Of course we are going to slay some wyverns. What? Why didn't you say that beforehand? Porter E was a bit surprised. Fuji, you know that we will die, unlike you. Porter tried to dissuade me. You are here not to fight. Then why are we here?
both of them asked the same, to carry the loot. An hour after we exited the city, we found a nice flat area with a good view. I intended to please myself with the view, while the aircraft are doing their part. After all, I will be stuck here for some time. The plan was to take down as many wyverns as possible with aircraft. It was my first step at learning air combat in controlled environment. Wyvern nests can be found, and I can aggro small groups to avoid losing everything at once. All eight A1N biplanes were fueled and armed. This time, however, I didn't park them at the stern to use the entire flight deck for takeoff, and instead I put them at the bow, right behind the catapults. Since the biplanes weighed a bit more than a feather, I tuned down the catapult's power. While the aircraft were launched with the catapults, I proceeded with planning the tactics. I came up with a standard tactic of attacking in pairs. The leading fighter will draw the attention of a wyvern and the following will be attacking. The difference is that I only use two pairs for this. Which means an entire flight remains unused. And this flight is also divided into two pairs, which stand by at a higher altitude near the fighting pairs. In case things go the wrong way, they will come to assist. I highly doubt that an animal like Quiven is capable of fighting an aircraft. Especially I doubt that it can perform aerial combat. The Wyverns rarely nest near human settlements, and even if they do, they do so in places where it's almost impossible to reach them. So the aircraft pushed deep into the mountain range. A biplane with red markings was flying above the mountain range. Its pilot was attentively looking around and tried to find the possible enemy. His war started a long time ago, when he was sent by his master to search around. And now he is about to enter an actual battle, the battle for air superiority. Red 2. This is Red 1. Enemy at 10 o'clock. Be ready to carry out the plan. Understood, climbing. The small biplane is only armed with two machine guns and is incapable of damaging any strong opponent. Their master ordered them to be ready in case their guns fail to penetrate the wyvern's hide. He will be the first to find out if they can fight the monsters, or if they are not worthy of their master's genius. Rated to -ta -ta to a torrent of bullets flew at a poor wyvern. With a terrifying scream it started falling and fell onto the ground. Red leader immediately sent this information. Now he will wait for the blue flight. The blue flight has another first task. They should provoke a monster and engage it in a dogfight. After several dogfights, I found out that the wyverns possess somewhat soft scales, which are incapable of blocking even my weakened rifle rounds. The next finding I had is that the wyverns can hover and even fly backwards almost immediately. Back in the World War II, there was a tactic of attacking from above, and immediately retreating back up. Naturally, with the enemy that can turn on a spot this tactic is preferable for a dogfight. The next step was testing. Immediately, the Red Flight received a new order. A biplane proceeded with searching for a test candidate, and when one was found, the biplane climbed. Red 2. Be ready to cover my back. Solid copy. Just leave some for me, boss. The unsuspecting target slowly glided above the mountains, sure of its invulnerability. When the biplane reached a good spot to attack, the plane did a half roll, and dived. Rated to tatar to their wyverns was just wounded, and the biplane quickly pitched up, escaping from the enraged beast. Red 2. It's all yours tilde. Thanks Tilda. The Wyverns are slow to accelerate but maneuverable. Their climb rate is as slow as their acceleration. I guess that I can just let my guys handle the Wyverns. After I was done with a few more tests, I ordered the fighters to start free hunt. Each of four pairs will just engage by themselves. The slaughter began. Eventually, I had to turn off the notification alarm as the reward messages became so frequent that I was irritated by that ding sound. The only thing that was interrupting the imminent slaughter was the inevitable R&R, &R, refuel and rearm. Every few hours I was resupplying my fighters, only to send them off into a new fight. While the boys were doing their magic, we, me, Alina and Albert, were chatting, eating and playing cards. 
They don't know that soon I will give them a map, and send them to collect my bountiful harvest of wyverns. Poor porters. P.P. Only when the sun set I recalled my aircraft. The next few days turned the P.P.'s lives into a hell. As soon as bags of loot fell near me, they would disappear. Finally, after the last beg fell and the last curse was said, I checked the rewards. Ding you received 5 gold coins, 130 silver coins, 41 upgrade points, 1 weapon point, 1 skill point, 1 group of B2M torpedo bombers, changes all other TB, 1 group of A2N fighters, changes all other F, 1 steam catapult, common, 3.965 type 98, main gun, IJN Fuji, CV. Level 17. Upgrade Cap 40, FP, 10 AA 10 Avenue, 20 Road, 36 AC 40. Aircraft Groups Fighters, A2N Torpedo Bombers, B2M Dive Bombers Installed, 3 of 8 B2M, Installed, 8 of 16 Uninstalled, 0 of 6. Main Gun 3.965 Type 98 Secondary Guns 4 Type 99 Rifle, 4 Max. Anti-Aircraft Guns 3 Type 99 Rifle, 8 Max. Flight Deck Ready Arrest in Wires Installed. Rare Steam Catapults 1. Installed. Epic. Grade 2. 2. Installed. Common. 3. Installed. Common. 4. Uninstalled. Rapid Deployment. LVL 2. Tenacity and Bravery. LVL 1. Brave New World. LVL 3. Starts battle with 10% aircraft in air. Every 30s shows your pathetic firepower. 5% bonus to FP and AA. On activation. Launches special airstrike of A4N, B and D1A. Can be activated every 1 hour. V1 rewrite. CH19. Manifest destiny after they delivered every bag of loot. Elena and Albert were lying like logs. They woke up in the midnight, only to start shouting at me. Where is the entire loot? E, I don't know. Just where could you disappear right? T, E, I don't know. Ugh, so much effort. Only for it to be for nothing. E, relax, it's alright. My playing fool was a success, and Elena stopped pestering me about the bags. Whatever. E. Fuji, how many days were we out here? A, I think. Four days? And tomorrow will be the fifth. E, uh, yeah. The half-asleep adventurers immediately looked sober, and started quickly packing everything. Fuji, do you remember that this morning we'll be escorting a merchant back to our town? E, you had an entire day to rest and sleep. What's the problem? You. A, am I sorry? No, I am not. By the morning we arrived to the town, and while I was made pack everything at the inn, Elena and Albert were meeting with the caravan. After the last of the half-asleep coachmen arrived, the caravan set out. We were about to pass through the main gates, when a bunch of armored men blocked our way. Their intentions were not appearing to be nice, but we were still in the town. And should I start tripping and tearing? The guard will most likely apprehend us, as the chief trouble causer. I stepped forward. Are you the fox that was in Miska? One of the men questioned me, judging from their clothes and armor. They are not rich, why lie, even though I wear a tablecloth. I'm wearing high quality silk. Chests out, and be dismissive, are you immortal, peasant? I decided to risk, how dare you? One of the men shouted at me. You dare talking back? I may be patient but even the patience of mine has its limits towards the peasants. I was not intimidated. Ark, may I ask what is your name? He started grinding his teeth. Why should I say that to a lowborn? My apologies. They appear to be shocked by my back talk. My try to put on a noble's facade was somewhat successful. Why you dared to stop my caravan? We didn't. You say I am wrong, or you dare to defy me? I wonder if I should just kill you all on the spot. The soldiers started hesitating, but hesitating if I am the real deal. Without saying any more words, they ran away as fast as they appeared. 
for now I was successful. Clapping nicely done. I couldn't do it better myself. Another person stepped out from an alley. Drake, what a pleasant surprise. My face grimaced with irritation. I assure you, those are not my people. No need to look at me like I am your sworn enemy. I am here just to give you a letter. D. I have no time for this. Just read it. D. I took the letter and quickly skimmed through its contents, retelling the contents in short. It is an invitation from the king. Usually that means that the king took interest in someone, and wants them to show up at once. For whatever reason, getting to meet a king is the last thing I want to do, so I dismissed the invitation. To hell with him. If he wants something, then let him come to me. WWW what? D. I am already in trouble. Andler's majesty would not change much for me, if they are friendly. They may step down and make a concession, if they want to try my weaponry, let them come. Fuji, I, you really better go. D. Listen, I never had an intention to cross paths with that king in the first place. I don't want to get involved with him, with this country, or with anything. If it is something all that important, then he might as well come to me himself. Otherwise, I would not be stepping out of my way to meet with him. Drake clenched his fist and quietly said Fuji, I am sorry but if his majesty will want you brought to him, I'll have no way to protect you. D. I won't be an easy target to capture. Farewell, Fuji. I hope that even if we meet again, it will not be in such depressing situation. D. With this we finally left the capital. Wait, it was the capital? It took us a lot of time and effort to reach Crystal Town and when we, the rogues, reached the inn where we are usually staying, after the door was closed I said to them, I think we are better to get the hell out of here, as far as we can. First some brigands, now that king, I doubt it will get better in the future. Great. We got into a deep mess. Thank you, Fuji. A. Eh? You are welcome. We are not too involved with each other so they may leave you alone. If you want to, you can stay here. Fuji, you are an idiot. A. Don't make me laugh. Why would we want to leave you? E. You too. I shook my head. Their determination was somewhat warming. What are we going to do? E. I think it's better if we go away from here. I suggest we travel somewhere far away from here. Accepted. E and A. We made another decision we might soon regret but for me this has no meaning. I can go wherever I want. My possessions are only my Nejanatu and Kimono. All my money is safely stored in another reality. On the other hand, Alina and Albert had a lot of things to pack but because they are fellow adventurers, poor as beggars and have so many things that it is possible to pack them all into a purse, they managed to pack everything fast. We spent our, their, entire fortune to buy camping necessities. For example two tents, a small pot and a lot of dried food. With this, we set out in search of adventures. AFP underscore writer sorry for the wall of text, both Patreon and Scribblehub glitched for me, and I don't know if it is possible at all to correct this. V1 rewrite, CH20. The hunter and the prey where are we even going? E. I have no idea. Let's get far enough from the town and I'll launch the planes to search for a path. For now, let's just go where the destiny will lead us to. I was about to say something about where the force leads us to, but I omitted that fact, since I only mastered the luck in all of its random instances. I am glad that you enjoy traveling, girls, but could you please take some stuff off my back? A. Silence. You don't want to make weak girls carry all of that, do you? After we left the town, we wandered off the road, and started going through uncharted paths and fields. Right now the roads may be dangerous, so it's better to be safe than sorry. Even if it makes it slightly harder to walk. When the town was long out of our sight, I summoned the gear, and prepared to sortie my newest acquisition. The A2N fighter has better characteristics, but it was a trade for lack of bombs. Since ground targets are times more numerous than the Wyverns, it is a huge disadvantage. 
For the time being the fighters will be fully reclassified as scouts and escorts for B-2M bombers. The fighters were lined up by the bow catapults, and the first pair was hooked whoosh like an arrow. The first fighter was shot into the air at its maximum speed. When the fighters were launched and started searching for whatever they can find, we continued moving. For a long time my fighters searched through the entire area. They found a few places of interest, and while I waited for them to return, the rogues set up a camp. Alina and Albert completely entrusted themselves to my pathfinding capabilities, oblivious of what is to come. When the landing procedures of two flights were approaching the end, one of the landing aircraft spotted something in the forest, something resembling humans. You two, wait here and don't go anywhere. However, if you are attacked, then run away as fast as you can. Hey, where are you going, little fox? E. I shall tell you later. Why not take us with you? A. Don't want to. Why do you always make things complicated? A. As I said. Yes. Yes I get that you want us to stay here. Why? E. For your own safety. It explained us nothing. E. Listen. Just be obedient and wait for a while, okay? Fine. This time I will let you go. But if you will not return safe and sound, I will never let you get out of my arms, ever. E. Before Alina's resolve to let me go was still there, I hurried away. The group of people all the way out here was a suspicious sight. There is a high chance there would be even more people nearby, since we are in the wilderness. When I caught up with the people, I tried to take a look at them. There were three people, all armed and wearing armor. I also noticed emblems, that resemble the ones on the people that tried to stop us in the capital. It was too much to be a coincidence, too suspicious. However, it is a forest, far away from the people, and there are only the four of us. You can't hear the screams, when there are no people to hear them, I decided to take care of those people, and find out what the hell is going on. I proceeded with attacking them and using my speed and momentum I caught them off guard. I cut off one's leg and with the pole knocked down the other. The remaining knight managed to block my attack but he was one on one with me. In a split second I made a decision on what to do next. Instead of attacking him until I take the enemy down, I decided to use another way. After all, I have a high chance of maiming or killing the knight, which will make him unresponsive to interrogation. I summoned my gear and bang the knight was knocked back a couple of meters after he got hit with 100 millimeters shell. It was just a dummy shell with a very small amount of propellant. Before the other two guys bleed to death, I tied all three of them and started the interrogation. I walked towards the guy without a leg. Will you talk? Screw you, B. The captive hissed. Undare Stu D. Without additional time wasting I kicked him in his face. Now that he is down I prepared to test how sturdy his armor is. What the f are you doing, animal? When he saw the Najinata positioned above him, he started having suspicions that something's not right. One last chance. Never, you go. I uh, no, no. When the blade cut through the armor, his bravado was immediately replaced with terror. I hit each spot that might be useful to test. I did it slowly and in a such order that he will not die until I am done. The faces of the other two became pale as sheets. They should be more cooperative now. I turned my head towards them after I was done. Who is next? And smiled. You think you can scare us? One of them tried shouting at me but it looked more like a bleating of a kettle on its way to the slaughterhouse. Well, he died before I could finish all my tests. They both looked much more cooperative after I announced that I am not done yet. What do you want to know? Was the first question after I approached the second one. Who ordered you to come here, why and where they are? His Grace. Duke Frenet of Caliga ordered us to find a foxkin who is accused of mass murder in Misko village. I don't know where he is, only where his mansion is located. It is. He spouted everything. Anything else to add? 
I turned towards the third knight. H His Grace said that we are to capture you and drag you to him. I, I heard he wants to use you for covering up of the slaughter. A Also the mansion is well guarded and stores some rare artifacts. Good. I guess you both deserve fast and painless end. Slash Pierce I sorted the aircraft to the area where the mansion would be and headed back to my favorite dummy adventurers. Announcement press F to pay respect for Ukraine. V1 rewrite, CH21. A crow in the foe's nest when I returned to Elena and Albert. I made sure to slightly correct the root wheel take. A large detour was not exactly in my previous plans. But now that I found out that I am being targeted, my enemy should expect me to show no mercy to the rogues. I had more than enough time to prepare the torpedo bombers, in case I would want to just flatten the entire mansion. However, the time it took us to walk, and the surging desire to check out what kinds of artifacts are there, resulted in me changing the plan and sending the bombers back to the hangar. When I finally discovered the mansion, I found a large stone building with a large garden area secluded deep in the forest, a small paradise in the middle of nowhere. The aerial recon showed that there were less servants than one would expect from a remote mansion hell knows where. I suspected that the duke was already away, and thus it made no sense to bomb this place. The patrols were lax, the mansion appeared to be half empty, and during the night most of the windows were not lit. In other words, a perfect opportunity to strike. One night, I sneaked away from the adventurers, and approached the mansion. It was so poorly guarded, that I could walk through the front gate, and nobody would stop me. But then again, why would I need to attract any attention? I needed another way to get inside, preferably unnoticed. Then, I remembered about the kitsune magic. Even if my fireballs were a bit larger than a chicken egg. I might have other magic. After some long time I managed to create a simple illusion on me. It was nowhere near the invisibility I'd desire, but becoming pitch black was still better than nothing. If anyone comes close, they'd wet their pants and faint, or so I hope. When I tightened all my clothes, so they won't hinder me, I approached the outer fence of the mansion. My ninja-styled jump was not elegant but I landed silently that is much more important. I created the illusion around me and headed towards the building. I quickly crossed the entire garden, and entered. I easily avoided any detection due to my sharp senses and fluffy ears, mostly because the guards were either drinking, drunk, or sleeping. The duke did his best to hire the elite, so he shouldn't blame me for stealing something because of their negligence. I decided to pray to the gods of luck. Then I threw a stick and it showed me the way. Lucky me, I found a room that appears to be the duke's treasury within three minutes after infiltration. Even though I was glad I speedrun towards the goal, it didn't cancel the need to open the treasury. I was a murderer, an imposter, a scumbag, and now I'm about to open another exciting new side of me, a thief. Since I didn't know how to lockpick, I used an old trusty way. Bang a solid piece of metal picks a lock faster than anything. I only did this because I had a nice idea beforehand. I created a vacuum around the barrel by using the fox fires. The actual sound of my gunfire was somewhat suppressed and mostly consists of vibration and recoil. Metal clanging might not be the normal sound of this mansion but somehow I got away with that. I assure you. It is not an arbitrary explanation of the fact that the staff did not come to check what the hell exploded here. Anyway, I got into the treasury and with a bit of fox firelight I saw what is inside. If I could see my eyes right now, I'd see two huge dollar signs reflected in the dim light. However, my triumph did not last long. Just how am I supposed to take everything here? I can carry the entire mass of this storage, but how? There are no bags that can handle it all, and if I store it in many bags, I'd have no way to grab them all. To my greatest regret I couldn't take everything I see here so I had to choose wisely on what to fit into my limited bag space. Because of my genius tactics I avoided any detection, 
and have a lot of time to choose my shiny beautiful things. In this wonderland I found gilded swords, an armor made of unknown black metal, a crown which I immediately put on my head, a necklace with a huge brilliant, which I immediately put into my bag, another necklace, and a few rings. I thought that I already looted this place enough after I felt that the bag is about to tear, but then I found a pretty pair of earrings. A few minutes later the bag did tear and all the precious shiny things fell on the floor with a loud noise. Nobody came to check what happened. I left the treasury to search for another bag, a couple of them. I returned soon, and like a crow continued my assault on everything shiny. Only after I heard another sound of a bag tearing I managed to calm myself down. With this much jewelry I can buy any upgrades I want. Wait a minute. I opened the details screen and placed a ring near it. The ring was consumed and my balance showed three more gold coins. I picked myself the best and prettiest jewelry, and of course my crown. Everything else, including that armor, was sold. My balance was looking like a national tax collection report. Ding the heist was successful, you received two death warrants, 40 platinum coins. 999 gold coins, 1 level point, 1 group of D1A dive bombers, 1 skill point, I did not even exit the building yet. And I am not guilty of anything, I was not even close to this mansion, I know nothing about it, with an almost empty bag of almost 3 kilograms of jewelry I decided to wander around the mansion in case I can find more shiny stuff. Just like that I found the duke's bedroom, where I believed must be stored something of value. I found nothing of value, and was about to leave, when I felt like I saw something move on the bed table. There I found a big jar, covered with clothes. Immediately after I removed the covering, I saw four flying lights inside, white, green, blue and red. When I touched the jar the lights approached the place, when I moved the finger, they followed it as if trying their best to stick to it, it was quite curious, and I decided to take the jar with me, I sneaked out of the mansion with all my loot, jumped over the fence and disappeared in the forest, all was done perfectly by the book, I was nowhere near being noticed even once, v1 rewrite ch22, your grace, those are my lights I returned to our camp by the dawn, Alina and Albert were already awake, and the moment they noticed my white ears protruding from the bushes, I was met with a murderous gentle glare. Hello Tilda. E, however, when I stepped out from my cover, the gentle glare turned into an overwhelming pressure. Fuji, where the F did you get that? Elena shouted and pointed at my crown. End of block 1.